Wrestling. Man desires to understand that which he cannot understand. He likes to be mystified. I brought you home! You recognize this man? They always want to know what would happen if Wolfman meets Frankenstein. Or if the world's greatest fighter meets the world's greatest crosser. They love to see blood in the civilization. You remember this place of this? Kind of reminds you of home, doesn't it? Christian and Tomko, their little secret they keep talking about. You like they know one sentence in a big story. You gotta stop worrying about your past. We can change your future. You we have with Sting. It's going to be broken once and for all. Time of this. Come on, come on. It was a free act accident when he won the first fight. The streak is over. The year and a half undefeated streak of the Samoan submission machine. Samoa Joe has come to an end. What is the greatest going to do? Hey, that's out. Don't won. I can't stand the fact that Samoa Joe has beaten Kalev. Samoa Joe, I want my rematch. You got it. You got your rematch. <laughs> You have least. This wasn't personal. Actually, it is personal. The evolution done of the rivalry between these two. We've seen it grow from the competition to the point where it's gotten just so personal between them. What a fight! What a war! What a feud! It was a free act of the death when he won the first fight. Oh, what is the greatest going to do? Joe is going to kill you. Joe is going to kill you. He's a bad man, ain't he? You die. 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 TNA Wrestling presents Final Resolution. Tonight, the Olympic gold medalist meets the Samoan submission machine in the rubber match. Yes, it's Kurt Angle versus Samoa Joe under Iron Man rules. Plus, Abyss defends the NWA World Championship against Christian Cage and Sting on the nation style. It's time. Let me tell you why. I 
can't believe he's a little bit better of an athlete of the two. If AJ Styles can make this match go longer and longer, it's gonna go in his favor. And another reason, I believe Rhino is so pumped up to get revenge, that that energy is gonna be hard to keep at that level the longer this match goes. I like AJ Styles on this long this match goes. Point counterpoint. What about the physicality? What about the size? What about the weight advantage? Oh, and you see it on display right there, right at him, even right before the opening bell. He put the shoulder into style, drove him right down to the mat. Well, the final line is this. Rhino's gonna be looking for that core, the core, the core, because he knows if he hits it, it takes the wind out of you. It's five or six seconds before you even realize who you are, let alone get up and answer the kick out. That's the key to a last man standing match. Falls are important because you then have the advantage because the match is over when a fall takes place, pin or submission, and the loser of the fall cannot answer the referee's 10 count. Quick reversal now. Styles gonna shoot Rhino directly into the corner turnbuckles, speeds in, elevated to the apron, tries a right-hand shot, War Machine blocks oh. it, oh, puts him face first right into the corner turnbuckle. Well, you're absolutely right. Rhino's game plan is gonna be to go. Wow, look at that power! Hitting sleep shots over the top rope and puts that foot. 285 to 295 right on top of AJ Styles. And let me tell you, that'll knock the air out of you in a hurry right there, Mike Tanay. That's a move that we would have anticipated from AJ Styles here in this matchup. We never thought the 280 pounder from the Motor City would do this. Look at this. Look at that weight. Full floor right on top of AJ. And then, while we were showing that, he threw AJ into the guardrail. Folks, that's the kind of action you're going to see. And it's all going right away. Early on, he's using that brute strength to wear AJ down. Two count only, Styles able to use his leg strength to avoid referee Earl Hebner totaling three. Big right hand shot to the side of the head of Styles. Boy, you're right, the war machine has been in the driver's seat right from the opening bell of this matchup. Using that power, side strength, and amazingly enough, even the agility, there's the legs of AJ Styles coming into play. Perfect extension and perfectly hit the drop kick on target. Well, and he's gonna have to use that. You're looking at 220 pounds there, give or take, against almost 300 pounds, give or take. And there you see Moody Jeff Melendez back there with Willie Urbina. You're right, Spanish broadcast table. Look up, Willie Urbina. It's Urbina and Moody Jack to check it out. If you want to hear the Espanol version, just press that SAP button. Face first, this time Style sends Rhino into the corner. Crowd here is on fire at the impact zone for final resolution, and Don, you can just sense it. The anticipation, the fans lined up for hours and hours outside the building. They With that obstacle so many people. Many, many fans, hundreds of fans turned away from this event. They want to see, yes, last man standing, AJ and Rhino. They want to see Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, and they want to see three championship matchups. I mean, think about this. You know it's going to be an incredible pay-per-view when you start the show off <laughs> with two former world champions. I mean, think about it. When did we ever see the final AJ Styles start off a pay-per-view? That's the kind of a card we got tonight, folks. All of you just sit back, buckle up, relax, because you're going to be in for one heck of a show. You're not kidding. What a way to kick off 2007 for TNA. Drop toe hole. Rhino goes face first right to the canvas. Check out AJ here. Oh, he's, is... he's taking the tape from around his wrist and using it to choke Rhino. Well, that's what he's got to do. Takes every shortcut that he can, because you mentioned it about that size advantage and that strength advantage that Rhino has. So you're going to see AJ Styles taking shortcuts. The hard part the stomach is, it's hard to believe that we're watching yeah. AJ Styles take shortcuts because he's always been about competitiveness, but something snapped in this young man, and he has not been the same almost ever since LAF beat, beat him and Chris Dennis for the deck. I mean, talk about a personality transformation. As we see the tape there, oh, flying it. Did you see that? Ripley Hefner went to pick up the tape and toss it out of the ring, and with his back turn, AJ just clubbed Rhino, caught him with that low blow. Oh, wait a minute. From the apron, springboard style. Look at how perfect extension he got in Rhino. Nowhere to go. He's got him in. count. All right, they're gonna start the 10 count right here. Ladies and gentlemen, see. Rhino has a 10 count to answer to stay in this contest. That is correct. He's got to be up to his feet in the eyes and in the mind of referee Earl Hefner by the 10 count, or AJ Styles will be declared the winner.
Boy, Earl Hebner getting right in. We're going to try and follow along here with Earl Hebner. Looks like he's about up to five, I would anticipate. Yeah, he's definitely giving these wrestlers time to get up there because it's just not a fast count by any means. As you see the War Machine needing every second of that in pain. And the, thing, the hard thing is for AJ Styles is he wants to continue on right now, and he knows that that little break might be a little bit to get right on back going and that's why AJ goes right after him with the blows. He knows he can't give him any break. Oh, you're not kidding. Exactly what we're seeing play out right in front of our eyes. Vicious, stiff, lethal kicks to the chest of Rhino. I like the cadence of referee Earl Hebner. I think it's a great yeah. idea. Go with that deliberate countdown. That way we ensure that we're going to get the real winner in this last man standing match. Oh. Styles going to try and bring the war machine back up to his feet. And as soon as he does, catches him with a right hand shot. But look at Rhino fight back, takes him up. Oh my goodness, just took him up overhead. And AJ Styles went face first right into the corner. Huge opportunity now for Rhino to turn this thing around and put it in his favor. With Styles totally on the defensive. After going face first right into the corner, turns up the war machine can take him out of play right now and anticipate a 10 count from referee Earl Hebner to get his hand raised in the last man standing matchup. Styles rocked after being driven into that corner. Rhino now has made his way back up to the vertical base. The war machine to his feet, but Styles takes the shortcut that time, grabs a hold of the trunks of Rhino and takes him and tosses him right out to the concrete floor. Styles is gonna fly, here comes AJ. Sensational flip dive by the phenomenal AJ Styles. And whether you love it or not, whether you appreciate the personality transformation that we've seen, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot deny that kind of athletic ability. Styles, of course, after connecting with that flip dive, he's slow to respond as well. Both Styles and Rhino down out of the arena floor. Referee Heather checking on the condition of both. Again, we're anticipating and waiting for the next pin or submission and a potential 10 count to decide this last man standing matchup. Sorry about that, Mike. I lost my, my headset through all that thing. Look, got to go with a spare here real quick, but what an unbelievable effort there by the phenomenal AJ Styles. And like you said, love him or hate him, you've got to respect that ability as he just absolutely has no give up in him. There's no quit in the phenomenal AJ Styles, and he's able to always seem to find a way to get that advantage going back his way. DW, you've been close to AJ Styles over the near past yes. five years. I never saw this one coming. I mean, this is, a, this is a young man that I've known, I mean, even before TNA was in existence. And I don't know whether you recall, but recently I did that sit-down interview with him, and he said, Mike, today you think you know me? You have no idea who I am and what we're seeing from AJ Styles since that point. I think it proves exactly what he said was right on the money. Well, and that's exactly right. He, he's somebody that I think has had this identity that everybody has perceives AJ Styles to be. And I think he, he just got tired of that in his own mind. He felt like maybe people didn't know what he was all about, where he came from. And boy, he's going about a different way. But now, what a spine buster. Look at that power right there. Pin, oh, the two, got three. It. Spine buster, high angle style that time by the War Machine Rhino enables him to get the three count. And we see referee Hebner now gonna put in the 10 count. Let's see if AJ Styles can get back up to his feet or will Rhino be declared the winner? Now, what, what another thing I like about the cadence of these counts by referee or Hebner is the, the wrestlers can hear the rhythm and they, 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 they realize they've got till 10 seconds and you'll see sometimes where they might take a little extra longer because they know the other guy can't do anything while their counting is going on and they can get up and get a breath. Gives that chance for the wrestler who's just been pinned or just submitted to get his win back on, to clear his head, regain his senses and refocus on the task at hand for Styles. He's looking right into the eyes of a war machine, and you know that Rhino's confidence level has to rise after getting the pin count off the spine buster. Well, that's exactly what he needed, and the only thing was you could tell Rhino just wanted to just keep going right at him, and they really put a hurting on, on AJ, and wow, look at him come off those ropes and hit him with that body block, and now look at his one, two, I mean, he just drove that shoulder right into AJ Styles right there, full bore. Good series of physical moves by Rhino. The clothesline leads to that back elbow, that shoulder, as you mentioned, that just drops Styles. The physical toll is starting, I think, to take its toll on AJ Styles. Rhino now continues the brutal attack in the corner.
corner. Going to try and go up here, and from the corner mount, going to try and bring him back into the ring with a suplex is what it looks like while Styles fights it off. Well, AJ Styles knows that if Rhino hits this, I mean, when you've gone this long in the match already, you, you, you've only got so much strength left as it is, and he's, wait a minute, he flips him over and he breaks him down! Sunset flip power bomb combination out of the corner and off that power bomb cover two and oh Free Hebner almost dropped the hand a third time, but Rhino rolled the shoulder before three You can just see it in the face of AJ Styles right there. You can see the The energy is draining from these guys and he knows he doesn't have the very many more of those in him and You've got to try to level him, and he needs to go right for another one right now and hopefully see that take out to get going because Rhino looks like he's wearing out himself. If we hadn't seen it go down before this matchup, I would have said that Styles, oh, as we see Rhino come right back and drop Styles down. I would have thought that Styles would not be able to give Rhino the Styles clash, but we saw that even prior to this matchup. Pin now, two and oh, shoulder up before three. I've learned never to question anything that AJ Styles does. This guy can reach down and find find a perseverance that, that most wrestlers just dream of being able to find, but Rhino is somebody that had good intentions from the beginning of this thing. All he wanted to do was keep the friendship alive between Christopher Daniels and AJ Styles because of what happened with him and Christian. And this thing just went bad. And you know there's such a thin line between love and hate anyway, and I think now Rhino, as you see him pulling these tables out, he wants to inflict as much damage as he can. He tried to teach AJ a lesson. AJ refused to learn. Well, there's nothing else Rhino can do. Oh, oh. oh that hurts. Rhino, I think, took way too much time to set that table up. Enable Styles to come out back on the arena floor, and we saw right there what he did is he just crotched the war machine right over the wooden table. You can see referee Rohebner trying to get AJ Styles back into the ring right there, but oh man, Rhino, it's gotta be in pain. That just, you, just, you can feel that, just the perfect placement of that table, how it was sitting up. And man, you're, you're trying to find feeling in all kinds of extremities after that. Measures him. Oh, man! Flying forearm shot by Styles. Right on the money. Here's the pin. No, just a two count. Again, Rhino just going by gut reaction right there. As AJ Styles thinks he's got a three, he wants him to start the ten count, but Rhino able to get that shoulder up. Not able to start the count right there. And look at that. You can see the frustration mounting on the face of the phenomenal AJ Styles. Looks like he's going to go high risk again. Out to the apron. Slingshot in. That's why we call it high risk. Cut off at the pass. Right in mid-move by the War Machine. Can he take advantage now? Oh, look at what... Oh! Power bump to that one! Two! Oh! AJ fights out of it. Wow! Styles kicks out of the power bomb. And Don, you talked about this earlier. The longer that this matchup goes, we anticipated that it, it might be advantage Styles. But the power and strength game of Rhino keeps him in the lead. Well, that just that's just us trying to analyze this before it happens. But as you watch it going on, you almost think the more powerful moves that Rhino performs on AJ Styles, the, the more the weight advantage does come into effect. And I, I got advantage Rhino going, oh, he does hit him with the Pele. He hits him with the Pele right on top of the head. One of those moves, Don, that it's so difficult to defense because you really, you never see it coming. Comes absolutely out of nowhere, and Styles with the Pele kick. He's got Rhino down, but he's not out yet. No, I don't know that he caught it with the full force that he wanted to. It looked like Rhino was moving his head away, and you see Rhino coming to his feet. AJ spins, oh, Gore! 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 He just levels him right there! Boy, you caught it. He may have even been playing possum off that Pele. You saw the quick recovery, and you saw that Gore. That one was for tight Don. We also know that Rhino loves to go to the corner and come charging at his opponent. Styles slow to recover and get to his feet, but when he does, uh-oh, check out Rhino, oh, hunched over, you know what that means. Oh, he's setting up for a real big time Gore right here. He caught him with the first one, now he wants to level with another one. Gore! 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 Two in a row, look at this! Count along with us! Two, Two three, three count! Oh, they nailed him! Now, the ten oh. count from referee Hebner, let's keep our eyes on Earl. He's at one, and of course the deliberate counts that we've seen. He's at two. 
Oh, Rhino going out to deal with that plunder outside, going to position that table in place while referee Hebner is going to count 10, or is he? Well, look at this. You can see Rhino trying to set up to really inflict damage. If the phenomenal AJ Styles can get up here on this 10 count, he's got it set up to just bury him as he set the table up outside the ring. Styles slowly making his way up. Referee Hebner getting really close to that 10 count. What's he at here? Seven, I believe he said. Well, you can see Rhino prepared. AJ sees him prepared. AJ knows Eight. he's ready. Oh, wait a minute, he just sits back down. What? Oh, he just mouths something to Rhino like, I'm not gonna let you, like, screw you. And ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the last man standing match, the War Machine, Rhino. This is a situation where AJ Styles surveyed what was going on down here, and he laid right back down as the referee Earl Hebner counted 10. I didn't finish AJ once and for all. I may have won, but you are still alive, and I'm gonna finish you off tonight. Oh, that's obvious. Rhino wins the match. He's not satisfied. In his mind, he was just getting the first few dollars of payback. And look at him chase AJ Styles right up the ramp. Wow. Well, you, we, we talked about how that was. I think AJ Styles realized Rhino was ready. He had the momentum and was going to really just tear him up. And that's one of them he figured I'll live to fight another day. Took the 10 count and walked off. And Rhino did not get his satisfaction. What a wild way to kick off this final resolution pay-per-view. Yes, the war machine. Rhino gets his hand raised but no satisfaction for the big man from Detroit, Michigan. Still to come at tonight's pay-per-view, so many great matchups. We have three title bouts in store, including the X Division title on the line. It's Saban, it's Daniels, it's Lynn. Yes, it's the past, present, and future of the X Division on display. And of course, I've talked about it earlier, the one title that Team 3D has not been able to get, and that, of course, is the NWA World Tag Team Championships, LAX revenge on their mind after what happened to Conan. It's the rubber match, it's Iron Man rules. Most falls in 30 minutes, plus the winner gets a world's title shot next month. Yes, Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe. And of course, it's the three-way elimination matchup. Wait a minute, as I see this, I, I'm looking up on top of the ramp right there as Rhino's got a hold of him. Rhino's got Styles out. Oh, oh my, Rhino driver right on the ramp. Oh man, he did catch AJ in the back and brought him up, and I'm telling you, just leveled him with the Rhino driver, wow! This is just what we talked about. Yes, he got his hand raised. Yes, he wins the last man standing match, but there was no satisfaction there for Rhino. No. He wanted to exact more revenge on Styles. Here's his opportunity. Looks like the table's gonna come into play. His goal was for AJ Styles not to even be able to get up at all, let alone get up after 10 seconds. He wanted AJ Styles carried out of here, and Rhino's gonna see to that as you see him bring the table. Look at this. He sets it up in front of the tunnel, and that can only mean one thing. He's gonna set AJ Styles up to take that gore right through there, and oh man, he won't get up from that. AJ slowly making his way to his feet. What a great camera shot that was. Over the shoulder of the war machine. Here he comes. Oh, drop the holds him right into the table. Wow, AJ able to recover. Oh, that was just devastating as Rhino just crashed right through that table that was stacked up at the entrance, Rev, and he's down. Oh, he had so much energy set up, he knew he was going to kill AJ with that shot, and AJ finds a way to live another day, and now he looks like the smart one by taking that 10 count earlier. Rhino wins last man standing, but check this out. AJ's on his feet. Up next, the X Division Championship. You call this match the past, the present, and the future of the X Division all in one match? Well, as long as I have this belt, Every title match is the past, the present, and the future of the exhibition because that's what Christopher Daniels is. I've stuck with Chris Saban because I see a lot of myself in him when I first started. Jerry Lynn, he's just past his prime. I am the present, and the future? <laughs> Give me a break. I I'm only 24 years old. A lot of these guys haven't had to live two weeks on a loaf of bread and a jar of peanut butter, sleeping on the entrance ramp of an interstate because you can't afford a hotel room. Christopher Daniels, he's another one who should appreciate the chances he's gotten. 
and try to help others. I don't need Jerry Lynn to give me respect. I don't need Chris Sabin to give me respect because I have this. And obviously, that was a complete fluke when I lost the title. I mean, you know, obviously, everyone knows they that. They don't have a respect for the sport. They don't have a respect for other wrestlers. They just think the whole show is about them. The final resolution at the end of this match, Jerry Lynn and Chris Sabin are going to say that the greatest X Division wrestler, the greatest X Division champion in the history of TNA, is now and forever will be the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. The X Division Championship is on the line as the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels, defends against Chris Saban and Jerry Lynn. I'm here with Jerry Lynn, the X Division pioneer. Again now, with Jerry. The pioneer. What are you insinuating? I'm old or something? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that's your reputation. As but I was in old again. What? No, but you're taking a big chance tonight, chance? and I was oh, wondering. Now I'm gonna if... go out there and have a heart attack or a stroke or something. You know, really just, just stop, stop. You know what? Ever since I signed on for this match, I knew I was taking a big risk. You know, I could either go out there and set an example for a lot of athletes who are in my same exact position. Or I, can, I know I can go out there and fall flat on my face, either or. But you know what? It's a calculated risk. Because at 43 years old, yeah, 43, I know deep down inside I can still go out there and dance with the best of them. And Chris Sabin, if you think you've learned everything there is to know about this sport from me, you've got another thing coming. When I see a snot-nosed punk like you with your attitude, and everything I say goes in one ear and out the other, you think I'm gonna waste my time teaching you everything I know? I don't think so. And Christopher Daniels, as far as you're concerned, you should know by now, every time we step foot in that ring, you learn something new. And after tonight's match, you're gonna be referring to me as teacher as well. Wrestling 101 is about to begin. Get ready for the first of three title bouts. Yes, the No Limits X Division. It's in the spotlight at final resolution, and let's break it down with the X Factors. It is, yes, ladies and gentlemen, the X Division pioneer Jerry Lynn. His return to the six-sided ring, a chance to win the title he last held in December 2002. No stranger to the X Division gold, Christopher Daniels, a three-time title holder and the current defending champ. At 24 years of age, Chris Saban, yes, he gives up years of experience to both of his opponents. But in terms of attitude and cockiness, he gives up nothing as he looks to regain the X Division Championship belt. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a three-way X Division Championship match. The first man to score a pinfall or submission will be the winner. Introducing challenger number one from Hell, Michigan, Chris Saban. <laughs> Well, Mike, you call him the future. When you look at that young age, his future is bright. The thing about it is, is he was a kid that was so easy to love, a kid that was so easy to follow. But the disrespect that he showed, I'm wondering if it was just going to be a little too much fighting off more than he could do tonight with this man coming into the ring. Challenger number two is from Minneapolis, Minnesota. He is a former two-time X Division champion, Jim What a response here for Jerry Lynn. You heard him, 43 years of age. Hasn't appeared in the TNA ring in a year and a half. Had a rotator cuff problem. Had the tendon torn, had to have it reattached. Great to have him back in the ring. And finally, from the City of Angels, he is the defending X Division champion, the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. Well, the same these two in the ring better not be worried about it. Too much teaching each other a lesson because that man walking into the ring right now is the X Division champion. He is the present. He is what TNA is all about. And let me tell you something, one of the best we've ever seen in the history of TNA. And he'll sit back and let these guys kind of try to get the revenge on each other and take advantage of it when it comes his way. No denying, three incredible wrestling talents on display with the X Division title at stake and on the line. The thing that has surprised me, and certainly not the heat between Jerry Lynn, the pioneer, and this punk kid, cocky Chris Saban, but how about the differences between Jerry Lynn and the reigning champ, the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels? That did surprise me. 
Well, I, I think it was one of those things where in Christopher Daniels' mind, it wasn't his war to fight. In his mind, he was the champion. He realized what, what Jerry Lynn was trying to do with Chris Saban, but he was doing it on Christopher Daniels' time. And I think he felt like, look, I'm the champion. Let me just get my belt, let me leave. And then, of course, Jerry Lynn felt disrespected, and then it went downhill from there with all three of these guys to lead to this, which is now it's got to be settled in the ring by all three of them. You can see right there, there everybody just kind of sizing each other up. You can see Christopher Daniels and, and Jerry Lynn lock up, and wow! Check look that at out! The text messaging going on. Overwhelming Joe! 61% Samoa Joe, 39% the vote for the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle. DW, tell everybody how they can get involved with that first ever TNA Mobile. The text vote, we're gonna take your votes right up to the opening bell of Samoa Joe, Kurt Angle. Very, very simple, folks. All you gotta do is text the word Joe to 25,000 if you think he's gonna win the Iron Man match. If you think Kurt Angle's gonna win the 30-minute Iron Man match, you text Kurt to 25,000. Remember, the number you're texting to is 25,000. Wow, nice drop kick right there by Jerry Land. Showing that at 43, he can still get it done. And, man, he doesn't look 43. You can see that just by the shape that he's in. How about Saban's strategy? Heads out to the arena floor, waits for Lynn and Daniels to square off. When he sees that there's a chance for him to come in and take advantage of a situation, that's when Saban gets involved. And I'm getting dizzy watching him run the ropes, I'll tell you that. Well, you couldn't do that. I mean, all using that six-sided ring to perfection right there. Nobody matched up, but it when it's all said and done, Christopher Daniels. Seems to have the advantage. Oh, nice kick right there to the gun. Look at that. Man, alive. Takes them both out in one shot. Well, you're not kidding. Two for the price of one. The champ stands tall while Saban and Lynn, the two challengers, are down. Remember, it's first pin or first submission to win this matchup and walk out a final resolution as the X Division title. There's the backbreaker across the knee. Daniels to Saban, then comes at him with the clothesline and takes him down to the floor. Oh, Saban oh, just crashed right into the steel. Right into the rail right there. I mean, that was just that momentum. What a smooth backbreaker that was by the fallen angel Christopher Daniels. And that's what makes him such a great champion. It's not that he can do everything well. It's just he's so fluid when he does it. I mean, you just you watch him perform moves and you realize how much farther along he is than so many people. Check this out. Figure four head scissors applied oh! by Daniels while he was also using the ring ropes there to choke Jerry Lynn. But you leave yourself open at that time. And boy, did Saban come just charging right into the champ. I mean, each competitor is so good and so fierce that you have to concentrate on them, but you can't forget that there's another person in the vicinity. You can't take your eyes off of anybody that time for a split second. Daniels forgot about Chris Saban, and he made him pay. Daniels has been taken out of the match. He's on the floor. Meanwhile, in the ring, it's Saban and Lynn, the two challengers squaring off, and certainly 24-year-old Chris Saban getting the better of 43-year-old Jerry Lynn. Well, being a little too nonchalant right now, you don't disrespect a guy that's held the belt, the X Division belt, the tag title belt that Jerry Lynn has held, and it looks like Chris Saban feels like he's just got him on the ropes and he's just taunting him right now. And I just don't think that's a good move. The champion, Daniels, he really can't stay out of the battle too long. You can't anticipate no. that a pin or submission is not going to happen while the two challengers are in the ring, because if that's the case, Daniels would lose the title. You saw that he tried to come back in. Saban knocked him out to the floor and immediately went for the cover on Lynn, but no, just a two count. And then and, and then about Jerry Lynn, even though you and I know how good he was. We, I mean, uh, we think about those first couple of years and those great views that he had with the phenomenal AJ Styles, but it's been a long time since he been in that ring and you don't know what kind of a toll is taking on him early on he looks in great shape you know that he's got to be ball oh, well there you go i was starting to doubt him for a minute and then jerry lynn just shows you what makes him such a great champion almost got the pin well that's the way to turn it around and you saw daniels coming back into play here boy it was lucky for the champion christopher daniels that lynn did not get the three count on saving and walk out with the x division title another pin attempt now daniels on lynn but jerry lynn gets the shoulder up that's a hard thing to be for christopher daniels you can actually lose your title in a match like this and not be the one pin oh man he's just so good he gets these submission holds and he locks him in and 
man alive now. You gotta look and see if Jerry Lynn can hold on. It's been a while since he's been caught in that. Of course, Saban wants to break it up so that he stays alive in the match, and he does break up the clutch, coming off that top rope with the big boot right into the chest of the champ Daniels, and turns his attention now to Jerry Lynn, and just gonna take him out of play. Toss him out to the floor, and now he can beat the champ. Going for a quick pin right there. I didn't think he was gonna get it, as you could see. Christopher Daniels not ready to to go down that quickly, but nice kick right there to the head is Chris Saban now concentrating on the champion, and as right now, Jerry Lynn outside of the ring. You're right, Daniels, I don't think sufficiently weakened at that point. Saban gonna try and continue the beat down off the snap, Mayer drills him right between the shoulder blades with the kick, and just as Jerry Lynn tries to get back into the match, he's sent out to the floor. Saban tries to take advantage with a pin, but no, just the two on Daniels. I mean, don't confuse this kid's cockiness with not knowing what's going on in the ring. I mean, he's held the X Division belt, I believe, three times. I mean, Chris Saban is incredible, incredibly talented, and, you know, he's... He's looking to start a dominance in the X Division, and you know we want to disrespect him because of how he disrespects everybody else. Can't do it, not as far as his ability goes. Kind of some interesting parallels that you can draw, I think, between the man that we saw in the first match, AJ Styles, and Chris Saban. Oh, absolutely, it's almost mirrored images, kind of. I mean, two guys that we've, we've grown to love and followed. Another pin attempt right there. Daniel's able to kick out of that, but man, they've just they've got their own agendas right now, and they don't care who they tick off as they go after what they're searching for. Yeah, they're both impossible to deal with, too, as Daniels tries to fight back from his knees off the series of right hands. He comes right in, but Saban's so well prepared. Caught him first with the mule kick, then that drop kick from the side and into the side of the head and body of Daniels. Man, right now, Chris Saban just, the, you can feel the momentum, momentum building here as he's just toying with Christopher Daniels, and he hasn't had Jerry Lynn to deal with at the same time. And oh, that hesitation drop kick! It's just like he suspends in midair and then crashes him right in the face. Going to roll him over, going to go for the cover off that drop One. kick. Two count, and there you see the save by Jerry Lynn. Imperative for him to get in and break it up, at least in his mind, to keep this match alive and to allow him to stay as one of the challengers. First pin, first submission, wins it, and leaves final resolution as the champ. Boy, there was no time to spare as he got in just in time, because I don't believe Daniels was going to recover from that drop kick, because it looked like a vicious shot to the to the chin that Saban in. And now, Jerry Lynn going up high. Oh, double drop kick as he hits the ball fight. You're right, dual drop kick. One leg for Saban, one leg for Daniels. And Jerry Lynn came flying off the top rope. Didn't look 43 there, did he? Man, I mean, this is maybe one of those advantages while Daniels and Saban were wrestling each other. He was able to catch a little bit of a breath outside of the ring. And I'm telling you, when you got a match like this, you can last long enough. That's a great advantage. And Jerry Lynn taking control of it one after another right now. First, it's the right hands. Then it's the clotheslines for both Saban and the fallen angel. Quick reversal. Daniels shoots Lynn off into the corner. Able to get the boot up. Trying to position himself off the middle rope. Wow! He just leaped right over Daniels and hit the hurricane run on Saban. Wow, look at this. I mean, Jerry Lynn just spins one right there on the fallen age of Christopher Daniels as the crowd gets behind him. I mean, man, a lot of this is 2002 all over again. <laughs> You're right, December of 2002, the last time that Jerry Lynn held the X Division gold. Going to try and make history. He was going to set up there for his patented cradle pile driver. He telegraphed the move and he paid. Daniels caught him, missed with the STO. Oh, that big forearm shot was right on target. Oh, wow, turned him inside out with that clothesline, though, by Jerry Lynn as he just caught Chris Shane, but all three of these guys are spent right now. You can see them all in there as referee Slick Johnson making the count. Champions, both challengers, all down on their backs. First to get to, well, his feet. Going to have a huge edge here, and Jerry Lynn is up to that vertical base. He's up first. Did him survey the situation? Where did he decide to go there? He decides to go with Saban instead of Daniels. Going to take him into the corner and rifle off a big forearm shot. Now going to put him up on the top, and Jerry Lynn heads up. Could be Bulldog off the top, but here comes Daniels. Oh, look how quick Daniels comes in, and what a shot there by Christopher Daniels. And it looks like Daniels took a shot to the back of his head. All three of them now got hit on that shot. Wow, I wonder if we can see that again. Boy, you're not kidding. All three pay the price right there. 
all three down and out. Remember, X Division title hangs in the balance. And I understand we are going to take another oh, look. look at this. Wow, all three of them got caught at some point. You saw the mouth of Saban hit, the back of the head of Daniels, and the front of the face of Jerry Lynn. All three of them took a shot, man. Daniels, first to his feet. Best BME. moonsault ever. Wow. BME, here it is. One, One two. two. Oh, Jerry Lynn, the save. How smooth was that moonsault? Fluid. It's just unbelievable. I mean, you can't help but admire the grace. Oh, a pin almost right there as he just gets the shoulder up. And Save it just in time. You're not kidding. That BME, best moonsault ever, it's a thing of beauty. But now it's Daniels and Saban down and Jerry Lynn in control. Could be cradle pile driver time again. No, up. Gonna try instead for what looks to be a power bomb, but you see that Saban is raking the eyes of Lynn and not enabling him to connect with the power bomb. Chris Saban, one of those kids that just he, he flies beyond his years at times. A nice. Oh, he went to rake, rake the foot across the face. Jerry Lynn able to defend it, and look at the strength of Jerry Lynn. One, two, oh man, broken up just in time by the fallen angel. Perfectly nailed the sit-out power bomb, but the champ did what he had to do to stay alive and survive. Breaks up the three count. Well, you can see the determination now on the face of the champion is. He goes right after Jerry Lynn. I mean, there's no looking back and wondering if Jerry Lynn could handle himself. All three of them have proven they belong in this ring. The champ, Daniels. One of the challengers, Lynn, with the mid-ring exchange. Swing and a miss by Lynn. You see how he blocked that yes. move? Nice counter. And then takes him up. Look out! Wow! He hits it! Here we go! One, One two, and go! Oh, man! Just in time! Man, Jerry Lynn was almost X Division champion all, another time. All three competitors on the verge of victory, only to see it broken up and to see that X Division championship belt just float right away as we stay with this matchup now. Lynn, Saban, Daniels vying for the X Division title. Great boot that time by Daniels. He caught Lynn right in the gut. Went for the Angels' wings, but it's blocked. Oh, wait a minute. This could be the cradle file driver. He's going for it. He hits it. Got he it. hit the cradle file driver. Here it comes. Count. Wait, wait a minute. minute. Saban rolls him up. Two. No. Saban just stole a championship. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, the new X Division champion, Chris Saban. Couldn't put it better myself. Chris Saban just stole the goal. It's exactly what he did. Jerry Lynn had Christopher Daniels beat, had him down and out. He hit the cradle pile driver. See the way Saban just came in and rolled him up to get the three count. Well, you gotta give him credit. He knew that all of Jerry's yes. energy was gonna be focused on Christopher Daniels, and it was like he didn't understand what was going on, but Saban rolled him up, grabbed him, I think, by the short. I would just love to revisit everything that went down in this match, and that's what we're gonna do. Check out this replay package. Look at the impactful moves here early on. There's that hesitation drop kick. We thought that might lead to the three count. Wow, beautiful hurricane runner right there by Jerry Lynn. And then we saw one of the most beautiful BMEs ever perform, the best moonsault ever. And look at Jerry Lynn, though, making the comeback. And at this point, he was so close to that victory, and Chris Saban cut it off. And there's the cradle pile driver. We thought that was it. We thought that was the three count, but Saban stole it. Saban beat the X Division pioneer, and Chris Saban becomes, yes, X Division champion once again. Ladies and gentlemen, a dejected Daniels walks away. Up next, the PCS to the back in JB. It all comes down to this tonight, the finals of the Paparazzi Championship Series. And the father of the PCS himself, Kevin Nash, here with me. You must be very proud after everything that's gone down. Alex Shelley, Austin Starr, in the finals tonight. I'm like an expecting father. I mean, I'm going to win some, I'm going to lose some tonight. I mean, I've, I've got both my guys in there, so it's, it's going to be a great night for me. Great night for the PCS. But you know what? i got a little something special for you tonight. That's right. I brought my head judge. Head judge? Head judge. It's right here behind you. Oh, yeah. Oh, Bob Backlund. Mr. Backlund, young man. Mr. Backlund. Bobby! Yes, sir. Yeah! <laughs> Hey, uh, good to see you. Where you been? Uh, how, how long has it been? We, we, you I don't know. We've been up and down the road together. Party well, what never road? A couple cocktails. Never been. Me? Never even been in a car with you, don't you know? Milwaukee? As you I've can see, Milwaukee. ladies and gentlemen, Everybody coming up the that. finals me? of the PCS no. championship. Chicago? You've been me. following. Are you with me in Chicago? On Spike TV. Chicago also. You, you know, you know what's led up Bamble to this. Theater. If not, in just a moment. They're gonna... No. Detroit? You and me? No. Vegas. Nope. 
not Vegas either. It was Scott Hall. Anyway, it's great to have you here, man. It's great to have you here because you know what? Tonight, the first PCS, it may fall on you your You know what? It's shoulders. great to be here. Well, it may fall on your shoulders, and I want to know. DNA! Uh, yes! Yeah, yes. exactly. I want to know if you're up to the challenge. It's not whether I'm up to the challenge. It's whether you put them gentlemen through the right torture chamber. Did they do their thousand squats a day? Did they do the Harvard step test for an hour a day? Did they learn how to do takedowns and reversals and pinning combinations and the cross face chicken wing? Did they learn that, young man? Well, they did like pogo and limbo and musical chairs. Musical chairs, and we all went out one night and drank till somebody puked. That's pretty torturous. It could be a rough night for those boys tonight if I'm going to be the judge. Well, okay, but let me ask you something. Are, are, are you in? Can I come I'm in? I'm in. I'm in. I'm, in. I'm happy. All right. All right. So uh, I'm going to go out there and uh, I'm counting on you, Mr. Backlund. Mr. Mr. Nash to you. All right. Bob Backlund solidified there as the head judge of the PCS. Bob Backlund here. Who else is here? We're going to find out as the finals of the PCS are underway up next here at Final Resolution. Listen, listen, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Those are the seconds on my career. You said you were going to take me shopping, remember? We got to go, we got to go. Yeah, air pay per view tonight. Can't go shopping tonight. Maybe, maybe tomorrow, maybe next day, a couple weeks, maybe. We'll get it done, I promise you. We'll get it done. Okay, okay. Bob Macklin. <laughs> Mr. President, it's an honor. I want you to know I voted for you in 95. The election was in 2000. Finals of the PCS, up next here at Final Resolution. What? Young man. What's wrong with that song, Cracker? Come on, you're in last place, let's go. Last yeah, place. come on, Mr. Chlamydia. Yeah. Well, yeah. Wouldn't it be an inspirational story if somebody with chlamydia won this event, huh? We're gonna do something a little special tonight. That's right, not since 1934 have we done this. A Backlund Bob Off. Sophomore in high school going steady style. Bob Off, Bob Off, Bob Off, Bob Off! Yeah. Yeah, we are playing European rules, please, at this time, Feel free to kiss the winner. Listen, no, not, no. Again. not again. Not again. Not again! Ah! <laughs> Final competitor from the island of Anabolic, hey. Sanjay Dunn. Hey, Kevin, he's got, he's got a nugget. <laughs> right there, authorized by Bob Backlund. See, winner of this hand will be tied with Austin Starr. One elimination, one card. Highest card wins. Boom! Oh! A little something for you. Oh, oh, for him. Oh, yeah. 20 points apiece, which means that you guys now will have a match at Final Resolution, a 10-minute time limit match, and you know what? The winner of that, PCS champion. No winner? No, we go to the judges. Judges? Yeah, wait, who are the judges? Who are the judges? The judges? Let me worry about that. Thanks for playing, guys. Thanks. Guys, it was great gifts, Punisher Longest Yard, Grandma Boy DVDs. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the finals of the Paparazzi Championship Series. Introducing the founder of the PCS, Big Sexy, Kevin Nash. Well, JB's right. This was his brainchild, the Paparazzi Championship Series. With these stars of the X Division, you see him giving the sign through many, many different tests. Jumping on the pogo stick, to Texas Hold'em, a little bit of everything in between. Big Kev wants to bring out, I think, a little bit of the character of the stars of the X Division. And of course, the man behind the PCS, Kevin Nash, he's gonna join us at the broadcast table for this. So many questions we gotta ask him. Don West, Don West is intrigued by Bob Backlund, let me tell you that. Very intrigued. How are you intrigued? Uh, is he up for the challenge here? I think he is. All right. He thinks he's out there. I know he's out there. 
It's Austin Starr and it's Alex Shelley. Ten minute time limit, and you brought in judges for this. Oh, this is this is unbelievable. Introducing your distinguished Doesn't judges. Doesn't this have the feel First of all, of a you know him game? from Madagascar Professional Wrestling. This is Samoan Joe. Wow, Samoan Joe. I remember him from the old, the old training days when you were uh, getting ready for a match. Him brought him in from Madagascar. I hit him with a moonsaw. The masked man from yeah. Madagascar to be one of the three judges. Yeah, Samoan Joe takes his place at the official judges' table right in front of us. Introducing judge well, you, number you, you two. You spared no experience with these judges, did you? Expert to the star. Star. Uh, star. star. Naked oh, yeah. oh, no, wait a minute. He's not going to be sitting here, is he? I mean, I don't, that'll be right in front of us. That's, oh, oh, that's just Oh, wrong. please, please. I can, oh, God. Oh, oh man. What? Oh, God. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your third judge. Please welcome to oh. the impact zone. The legend himself. The legendary, multi-time world heavyweight champion, Bob Backwood. Silence from you guys. This is the first time. JB introduced Bob Backlund. We didn't want to step on him, but I know Don West has his spot. I, I can't look at this big, fat, oily guy anymore. Wow. What do you think of Backlund, DW? Well, I'll tell you what, he's a breath of fresh air after looking at the first two judges come out here. I think, just, I think he wanted that kid to run down the list of the presidents of the United States right there. Yep, bow tie and all, Bob Backlund. Judge number three for the PCS Finals. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the 2006 PCS Finalists. Introducing, first of all, from Detroit, Michigan, Alex Shelley. Like a son to me. You know, a lot of people have accused you, Kevin Nash, of being a front runner, a bandwagon jumper. When Alex Shelley was really on a roll last year, you guys were pretty tight. But ever since Austin Starr won that Kevin Nash Open Invitational Gauntlet back in your hometown of Detroit, Michigan in the month of October, boy, you have been really singing the praises of one Austin Starr. Yeah, but, I mean, I, there's no love lost between me and him. I mean, Alex is, Alex and I, he's, he's like my firstborn. And who's saying, finalist number two in the 2006 PCS, weighing in at 219 pounds, Austin Starr! I gotta admit, as we see Austin Starr coming down here, I thought it was pretty convenient that you pulled out the ace last week for Alex Shelley to get the win. I thought that looked a little suspicious, like maybe a trick deck was in play. Uh, it was, actually, it was the TV Magic cards. I remember those. Yeah. <laughs> so I. Yeah, the Popeil Pocket Fisherman, you got yeah. one for free along with the TV Magic cards, didn't you? I, I, I thought you'd lose it on a daily reference. I got one for you. You know the guy that did those commercials was the guy that played what Wizzo of the uh, Bozo Circus Show. That's that's way much, uh, yeah. way way too much information than we did need. Not know that. You did too. <laughs> Alex Shelley and Austin Starr, like two kids trying to outdo each other to impress their dad. You said he was like your first born. That's the way I see it. Well, Alex, no. go ahead. I'm sorry, Kevin. No, you go ahead, sir. Well, what I like about this is, you know. These two guys have had their differences the whole time since you've got been in the picture. I'm glad to see these guys actually face off in the ring because now there's only one way they can impress you, and that's by getting the victory. I'll tell you what, it looks like there's going to be a little bit of a feeling out period here. Ten minute time limit. The PCS Bowl, the finals, the Paparazzi Championship Series. And I mean, I, I don't know, I'm looking at these judges and, and trying to avoid the, that big, fat, oily guy. I mean, Bob Backlund, he's certainly qualified. You feel confident putting the fate of your PCS in the hands of the, the big, fat, oily guy, whoever he is, and that, oh, char that character in a mask on the end who claims to be from Madagascar? They wouldn't be here if they weren't qualified. Nobody knows Bob Backlund like Kevin Nash, that's for sure. Backlund, multi-time, world's heavyweight champion. I mean, he beat superstar Graham back in 78, then had a short-lived run, shall we say, back in 94 after we beat Bret Hart when he lost the WWF title to the man sitting at the broadcast table with us, Kevin Nash. That's why I brought him back. So we could have, I brought Bob back just so we could talk about that. It was quite a night, wasn't it, when you beat Bob Backlund for the championship.
39,000 in the uh, Madison Square Garden. How many? 39,000. 39,000, yeah. I, I, but they do open the felt for them. Yeah, closed circuit. They also bust them across the Meadowlands. Yeah, they probably closed watched. circuit there also. Yeah, probably watched on the uh, big screen in Times Square, too, didn't they? Hey, did, you know, make, hey, make it good as long as we're revising history. I didn't want to brag. And they got their money's worth in that match, I might add. Did thing go like an hour? What do you mean an hour? You know, like eight seconds? Uh, it was longer than that. It felt like an hour. It was eight seconds. Eight seconds. I've been telling my wife forever that's an hour. So. <laughs> Hulking up. What are you laughing at, DW? Concentrate on the match. Would you help me out here? Uh, it's give or take a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> the leapfrog by Austin Starr. Wild shot. Oh, miss with the wow. line. Shelley answers with a clothesline. That one didn't miss, did it? No. Turn him inside out. You can see it looks like Bob Ackland Bob is very intent on judging this correctly as his, his attention is focused completely. And I don't believe the big fat only guy's focused on anything but eating. Whoa, man, Austin Starr springs back from the middle rope and he just drops Shelly in his tracks. There you see him. He's, oh, brother. That's just not a visual. Can we just do close ups on Mr. Backlund? Really? Please? Come on, Scott. The cameraman. Please. Just on Bob, oh, please. Scotty. You got it, flaunt it. Austin Starr in control. Ten That'll make you ill, won't it? PCS Bowl, the championship of the Paparazzi Championship Series. And a spin kick by Alex Shelley. That one just nailed Austin Starr. I think you're being kind of shallow. I think you're judging by his appearance. Nice backbreaker right there by Alex Shelley. Earlier, there was a lot of mat wrestling going on. Now, they're bringing out all the stops. Little chance there, an opportunity to hit that sure new out of the corner, the sliced bread number two. That didn't happen. Austin Starr stopped, blocked, and then comes back and connects. Left hand and the elbow to the back of the head of Alex Shelley. Remember, 10-minute time limit. If there is not a pin or submission in that 10 minutes, it's going to go to the judges and... I see Bob Backlund scoring down here at, at ringside at the table. And not too sure about the other two characters. Wow, nice move right there by Alex Shelley. He caught the leg, slapped him in the face, and then just switched that leg down. But now look at this. Off the car, set him up, and Alex Shelley goes flying over the ropes. Smart move to drop down. Shelley crashes and burn. Star measures him, slingshot. Oh, oh twisting. You see the revolution in that? And then connected with the cross body block. Did that was impressive. That? Oh, that was, yeah, you can see him coming over to the judges. Did you see that? He said he's making them score that. How about that? Well, obviously, the Simoleon Joe doesn't That's know. One point for me, I got to give it to Star right now. He's ahead of my, on my sheet. Well, I mean, I, 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 you got to squeaky wheel get screech. You got to come over and make sure they saw uh, what they absolutely. saw. Absolutely, absolutely. He turns his back oh. on Alex Shelley and Austin Strauss. Well, I thought he was going to pay for it. Shoulder block instead from the apron. Outside in. Went for it a second time and took a kick right in the chest for his trouble. Is Shelley going to go up here to the top? Uh-oh. Star in trouble. Look out below. Oh, man. He caught oh. that knee right on the side of the head. And you see Shelley crumple. I mean, Star crumple to the, the ground there. And he can't quite get his bearings. Oh, suicide! Oh! Right through! Right in front of the judges right there. They've got to be scoring some points for Shelly on that. That's the key. I'm going to take another look at this, but when you see Shelly connect with the suicide dive, look at where they're land. Right in front of the judges. Talk about impressing. You now that big, fat, oily guy, Simone and Joe, and of course, Mr. Backlund. Look at it again. I mean, that's right, Mr. Backlund's lap. Oh. Alex Shelly scoring some points on Bob Backlund's sheet. Pretty even to this point, I would say. What do you think, Kev? I don't think you need to be messing with Bob. Bob might take a point away. Boy, you heard that kick all throughout the impact zone here at final resolution. Reverberation from the boot. Off the double leg. Star in trouble in mid-ring. Shelly to take advantage. Springs back. Off the middle rope. And connects. Here's one. one. Yeah, Here's two. two. No. Nope. Keep in mind, there is a 10-minute time limit on this match. Little mid-match breather, a little bit of a break there as Austin Starr, oh, and he went for the water bottle and spit it right in the face of Shelly. 
Oh, he did. He just caught him perfectly. He spit it right in his face, and that gave Austin Starr the advantage. But, oh, Jelly counters with a beautiful kick to the side of the head. You're right. Countered the suplex attempt. Drilled him in the side of the head with the boot. Starr crumbles in the corner, and Shelly senses victory. Here he comes. Oh, big forearm shot. Gonna try and take him out of the corner now. Oh, instead, he just took him, spun him right around, threw him right into that middle turnbuckle. Now, what was that about? I mean, a little slap on the ass? What's that? That's what it was. Exactly. What a Locking kick his right territory. into the ring post. Two oh, and... Oh! oh how did he kick out of that? Holy cow, as you see all the judges writing furiously. Except for the big oily guy. I think he's, uh, he's looking at a menu. I think he's... If it, does go, if it does go to the cards, I'm telling you right now, Shelly's strong at the end. And you know, as we've seen, when there are judges involved, it's so important to do what you just said. Be strong wow, in the kick. closing minutes of the match. Great kick, roll through, pin, two, no. Man, it's been back and forth action. It looked like Alex Shelly had the momentum going then, and on, you could see Austin Starr has turned it around perfectly. All right, if you guys were the judges, who'd you guys have right now? I'll tell you what, it's, it's pretty, dead heat. pretty even right now, but you're right, Austin Starr, he's got to impress us here with the way he's been on the offensive for the past several minutes. But man, he just got cut off right that time by Shelly. This is one of those, you want to be you want to be in control of this match when the time limit goes up, because that might be the last impression you give the judges, might be enough to get yourself the victory. Oh, oh Lord. man. Caught him with the kick. Then drops down. Yes, both knees right in the back of Austin Starr. Well, Alex Shelley, he's turned it around now in his favor. You can see Bob Acton looking down, trying to figure out how he's scoring this. I think that's what he's doing. Mm. Slingshot move possibly in as he waits for Starr to get to his feet. Watch Shelley. Here he comes in. Right into oh, the DDT. Beautiful. That's Here it. it is. That's Here's it. Here's the pin. One, two. two. Oh, unbelievable. Austin Starr has pure instinct. Tell you what, guys, we got to be getting close to that 10-minute time limit. Elapsed time, nine minutes. One minute remains. One minute. One minute to go. Nine minutes gone. We're down to the final minute. Kevin, is I've that got just... Shelly on this right now. I mean, if I had to pick somebody, I'm going to say Shelly's ahead. I mean, the, 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 how often Stark kicked out of that, though, is amazing. You've got to give him some credit for that. I mean, how do you do that? Do you just hear the count? Do you just react? These guys have been under my training. These guys are well oiled. This is these are my guys. Oh, look at this! This went right in. Oh, oh right in the hands of right the right seconds remain. Thirty seconds. Half a minute to go in the PCS Bowl Championship of the Paparazzi Championship Series, and here comes the Camel Clutch. Submission oh, hold the for Submission. Can Alex Shelley says no. I think he's got to hang on here, guys. That's the key. We're under 30 seconds. 10 seconds. He's looking right at Beckman while he's doing it. Come on, it. Shelly. Come on, Five, Shelly. Five four, seconds. He's going to try and hang on. Two, one. Oh, Austin Starr. Oh, my God. Go into the cards. He's going to go to the judges to decide Ladies it. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now go to the referee's scorecard, the judges' scorecard for the decision. Wow, this has got to be close right now. I just hope that the fat Oli guy wasn't marking a Chinese menu the whole time. <laughs> I still believe it's one of those where at the end you need to be in control. Austin Starr was. That might be enough to get him the victory. He was in the submission, though, and Shelly had the near fall, so I don't know. JB has the scorecards. We're going to go to mid-ring and find out who wins the PCS. Sounds like the crowd is split on this themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, the judges have rendered a decision. Judge Samoan Joe rules the contest in favor of Austin Starr. I don't know. I mean, Starr went ahead and, 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 and marked on his scorecard. That's a little kabuki-ish. The last impression is the best impression. Judge Fat Naked Oily Guy renders the decision for Alex Shelley. Oh, we got wow. a tiebreaker. That means that Mr. Backlund is going to have the swing vote, the deciding vote. Ladies and gentlemen, that means Mr. Backlund has the final deciding vote. And he has Judge left the Backlund table. Rules a match in favor of. What? 
What's going on here? Maybe he's changed his mind. Maybe he wants to say something else. Maybe JB couldn't read his handwriting. was conditioning. Were these gentlemen, or was their conditioning augmented enough to be able to give them the skills necessary to perform as a professional wrestler? Austin Starr, 92. Alex Shelley, 95. All right. No, hang on. There's more. Did they procure takedowns in the proper positions, form, and balance? Austin Starr, 82. Alex Shelley, 95. What does it all mean? I'm, I'm, more, I'm more confused now than I've ever been. Was the, did the body positions have a deleterious effect on their ability to augment the right positions? What? Subtitles Austin would Star, be nice. 90. Is that Backlund out there? Alex Tyson. Shelton, 85. Alex Shelton. I think Austin Starr won that, whatever that was. Yeah, I think he did too. Were the, were the pinning combinations that they used beneficial enough to win a match? Austin Starr, 10. Oh, it's not good. Alex Shelley, 9. What? Nobody was able to pin anybody. Yeah, we saw that. All right. Let me talk about <laughs> Master of the Obvious. Did they build the match? Did they build the match in the proper way to entertain the plebeians that are here tonight? Well, he takes it serious. I'll give him that. Are you a plebeian? Austin Starr, 25. Alex Shelley, 25. And that's the verdict, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a minute. You've rendered this decision after all that? A what draw? A, a draw. Uh, a draw. Hold on, hold Wait on. a minute here. And Kevin Nash is leaving the broadcast position. I think Big Kev, the mastermind behind the Paparazzi Championship Series, I think he's going to have the last word. We say five minutes, seven minutes. Your attention, please. PCS founder Kevin Nash has ruled that since the judges couldn't make a decisive decision, we will now go into a five minute overtime. Well, I've got to see that. Look at this ball. Look at the, 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 the big oh. seal. Five minutes of overtime. Backslide. Star shoulders are down for another near ball. Wow, these guys are going right at it. They know it. They better hurry up and get a quick pin. I don't want to go through another judging process like that. The BCS was like a work of geniuses. Holy cow! And here come the other X Division stars, Jay Lethal, Sanjay Dutt, that were involved in the PCS, and yes, Senshi as well. Boy, he looks thrilled to be here, doesn't he? Uh, he, he always puts a happy face on things. Well, it's, it's good to see him in a good mood. There's the trophy brought into play. Yes, Alex. Shelley is the winner. Alex Shelley victorious. He wins the overtime. He gets the pin and he's hoisted overhead by the other competitors from the X Division. Sanjay Dutt, Jay Lethal, and look at Austin Starr. What a fine moment in the life and career of Alex Shelley. I mean, uh, this has got to be like right up there with. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, I can't you, think of anything you can be right up there you, with. You started it, I wasn't going to finish it. <laughs> My sarcasm was it coming through? <laughs> He's yes. so proud. Alex Shelley, the winner. Kevin Nash extending his hand. I'm still confused. Wait a minute, did you see? He see slapped the hand of Kevin Nash right out of the way. Look at Austin Starr getting Nash's face. Well, I mean, it, it was a draw. Oh! oh. Boy, he just jumped. But look at this, he goes right after Sid G right there. Now, Sid G's, the, Sid G's the, the peacemaker well, here. He's a team player, always has been. Oh, always. Turn this thing on! I've had it up to here. No, actually, I've had it up to here with this crap. I did not come to TNA.
to jump on pogo sticks, to do limbo, to play poker. I didn't come here to resurrect your career, and I didn't come here to play second fiddle to any of you chumps. Wow, that was stiff. You see, there's only one person in this ring I respect, and that's this man right here, Senshi, the warrior. So let's go, Senshi. Let's leave these chumps behind, and let's get out of here. Well, looking for a little support right there, and I don't think Sid G follows anybody but his I'm own sorry. way. You're right. Maybe I'm breathing heavy. Maybe you didn't hear me. Or maybe I'll speak in warrior tongue. I said, "Come on, Senshi, let's get out of here." Well, that's not gonna work. Pretty good impersonation, though. What? You want to stay with these guys, huh? You want to disrespect the Austin Star and stay with these guys? Fine. Oh, he just slapped Sid G. Uh, that is not what wise. on earth are you doing? After you get left from unbelievable, you can see Sid G just going right at him. What was Austin Star thinking? He just stabbed here, Mike. Why would you slap the face of the warrior? I mean, obviously he felt disrespected. He wanted Sid G to join him and leave the ring. He said he had respect for him just minutes ago. You, this is God's more bizarre. Look out here. Holy cow. Samoli and Joe just goes ass over T. Kettle. Oh, please don't send yeah, him to the box. Get him out of here, that oh, big a fat tub of glue. Mr. Backlund. Don't screw around you with Mr. Backlund. Come on. You tell him to stand up. No, he he's snapped. He just snapped. Oh, he piped me. He piped me. Stop Backlund. Ah, there it is. Crossface chicken wing. Crossface chicken wing. And you see security coming out right here. such a horrible feeling to see that Mexican flag raised and hearing that national anthem. But what was worse than that is having my integrity questioned by my own partner. But we're past that now. We stand here as a team united. Sword's got a beer bump. Sword drawing back at Homicide who gets out of the way. And what? Oh, hey, God. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, my God. He just busted his own partner, Chris Harris, right in the face. That's his own partner. I am not believing what I'm seeing, Gail Kim. With a look of shock and astonishment written across her face. Petey Williams up in James Storm's face. Williams very upset at what went down in the back in the locker room area as well as out here in the arena. Look at how aggressive Petey Williams is. Ladies and gentlemen, final resolution continues with the following one fall contest. Introducing first, accompanied to the ring by Gail Kim from the first sport, Tennessee, Cowboy. Team Storm! DW, think back two weeks ago on our Thursday Night Impact broadcast. Big Storm, he imposed a deadline, a seven-day deadline for Gail Kim. He said, you must make a decision. Is it going to be me or is it going to be the Wildcat Chris Harris? And you look at the body language from Gail Kim right down here. And, uh, I mean, she was born with making that decision. But I mean, if you think about it, what other option did she really have? We saw the Wildcat, Chris Harris, this week on Impact, and he said he might never wrestle again. Well, we know in this business, if you're not out there, you can be forgotten, and Gail Kim understands that there is no Wildcat, Chris Harris. She wants to work, and if it means staying with James Storm right now, that's the decision that she's got to do. And you can tell, though, she doesn't like it for one minute, Mike. And his opponent from Windsor, Ontario, Canada, Petey Williams! And here he is, Petey Williams, the man that was, you think back years ago, he was so easy to hate, but last year he stepped up. Stepped up to the plate in a big way. And when it came to defending this very country, it was Petey Williams that sacrificed himself. Got into the face of things before, we remember with LAX. And then came on the side of America's Most Wanted when they were in that great battle with LAX. And it 
it was so nice to see this side of Petey Williams because we always talk, Mike, about how easy it would be to like this guy because of his in-ring ability, because he's so talented. We always felt that it was just that big load Scott DeMore that, that was holding him back. And it's obvious it's true because we've seen this different side of Petey Williams and then things got kind of weird there with AMW and now it's hard to imagine we're watching James Storm in the ring and you can't help but, but screw on Petey Williams. I tell you what, our level of respect has grown so much for Petey Williams as a man. You said it earlier, Petey Williams always has impressed us with his in-ring ability. And you see the drop hit sends the Tennessee Cowboy, Mr. Storm, out to the arena floor. The Canadian Destroyer. Oh, man. Is there a more devastating move oh. as, oh, my, went for the slingshot, and Storm just took it and slammed it face first right in the side of the apron and pushes Amberman out of the way as well. What a great counter right there by James Storm. I mean, he he timed it perfectly. He saw Petey Williams slingshotting over the ropes, and he just used that momentum and applied the pressure and slammed him right there on the ring apron. And, man, that's all Storm needed. And look at he's just got a vicious side to him now. Everything he does has just got that deliberate anger behind it. He slams Petey Williams back first, right into the side of the ring, then rolls him back into the ring and goes for the pin attempt. Petey able to power out before three. There's the big boot. There's that. Wow. Oh, wow, what a move. Goes first with that double underhook, takes him, spins him in mid-move, powers him down, cover, and a two count. It's one of the situations that James Storm, since he's left Wildcat Chris Harris, has had, uh, again, another one of those attitude changes that we've seen in so many people, but even though I don't like what I've been seeing with James Storm, I've got to admit, it seems like he's wrestling with so much more of an edge right now. It's like, you know, whatever he's doing is working for him. First time ever, TNA fans, you have the chance to vote. Who's it gonna be? Quick roll up here, PD, shoulders have scored down for a two count. Is it gonna be Kurt Angle? Is it going to be Samoa Joe that will be victorious tonight in the 30-man Iron Minute match, and you can text in your vote. Oh, that's very easy. Just if you want Joe, text Joe uh, to 25,000. If you want Kurt, text Kurt to 25,000. Remember, 25,000 is the number that you're texting to. Very simple. Last time we looked, Samoa Joe was up 61% to 39. We'll try to give you an update. And wow, the eye of the storm right there by James Storm. He just spun him around. And the size advantage ever since, wow, it's, it's cut into it a little bit, but everybody's still believing Joe. Going to win the rubber match here in the Iron Man match coming up in 30 minutes. All right, 60% say Samoa Joe to win the Iron Man, 40% for Kurt Angle, and you can text us, you can vote right up to the opening bell, and at that time, we will give you the final results. Petey in trouble right here, and in a bad way, in a bad position, and Storm catches him right in the face with a boot. What a tough position for Gail Kim to be in, Don. Well, she, she still can't get over what James Storm did to Wildcat Chris Harris. Just the, the blatant bottle under the eye. We don't even know if the guy will ever wrestle again. I mean, when you do something that, that damages the eyes, and you're talking about a man's athletic career, and it might be over, we can just hear it in Chris Harris' voice last week. Or, you know, last Thursday, we can just hear it in his voice. And just how he, he felt, you can hear the quiver. And, and he doesn't know what the future holds. And Gail Kim, I don't think, likes the decision she made but she made it to keep working, and, and I'm going to respect it at this point. I mean, there's no women's division here right. in DNA. Good as Petey going to try and mount a comeback, drops him down on his head. She just doesn't have that many options, so you really can't blame her, especially when you take into account that Chris Harris's career is in jeopardy. But one thing I've noticed about Gail Kim, I don't see the enthusiasm on that side. I don't How see How can her. there be? No, she's not screaming for James Storm. You don't see that. I mean, she's, she's letting me know she's out there, but... You just don't see that fire and enthusiasm that she would always have. You don't see her patting the mat, just you know, really getting behind these guys. And right now she's confused. Petey Williams out of the corner, attempted a DDT. Instead, the size and power advantage of James Storm enables him to take him out onto the apron. And then there's the cross body block off the top by Williams. Nice cross body block right there by Petey Williams. And there he goes for the, oh, look at this. Side rush the leg sweep and he nails it. Now he wants to get him up so he can reel him in and get him in that Canadian Destroyer. I'll be anxious to see if he can get things for him in the Canadian Destroyer. And here he is, trying to reel him in, Mike. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Now, Storm up to the challenge, able to block it, and then just bum rushes him into the corner, takes him up, sets him up in that top turnbuckle. Big 
right hand shot. Went for the snapmare oh. in the corner, and then DDT drops him down. Just set it up perfectly and nailed the back of the head right there. And Petey Williams looking up at the lights. Did he get the pin? No. Just got the shoulder up in time. And you know what? I, I, I was looking at the pin, and at the same time, watching Gail Kim, and you really made a good point earlier. No enthusiasm here for Storm. I quite honestly can't blame her. Even though right there, he was on the verge of victory. There goes Petey, sent out. I think Storm thought he was going to take him out to the floor. Petey lands on the apron instead. Shoulder block. Petey still holding on. on. Yeah, you're right. Moved out of the way. Puck Storm with the kick. Sunset flip in. Storm with a whole lot of those ropes. Nice kick to the back right there by Petey Williams just to get him to break loose. Oh, and nails him in the back with that drop kick. Right between the shoulder blades. Slingshot quickly back out to the apron. And now in oh. and both knees right into the chest and face. Here's the pin. One, Here's two. two. No. Just in time, James Storm gets the shoulder up right there. And again, you can see her. She's going, come on, James. But there's just no fire to it. Fans Petey here. Oh, definitely a final resolution behind Petey Williams, but he's in a bad way. Trapped in the corner, and Storm is setting up for the super kick. His patented move. Petey Williams, oh, sees it, gets under it, and then look at this. He goes right into James Storm, and James Storm's feeling, feeling confident. Going for the catatonic, it looked like. You're right. Chris Harris, his former partner's finishing move, of all things. There's the Canadian Destroyer block. Quick roll. You use the wrong. And he got the three count to get the win. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Cowboy Team Storm. Oh, I used the ropes right there to see what you would expect of James Storm at this point. Yes, James Storm gets the short cut victory. But then Rudy Charles asking the fans here. Of course he used the ropes, Rudy. Rudy Charles did see him. I swear, I think Gail Kim's telling him. He, yeah, look at that, you can see Storm pointing at him like, don't you dare. Oh, oh and he catches Petey Williams from behind. Now it's just getting vicious. Big shots to the top of the head, and another one, big clubbing blow. Series of them to the back. And now, right in the face of Gail, come on. You can see he's had enough. Oh, wait a minute. He, he cooked up the handcuffs that were on Gail Kim short. Yeah, it was a fashion accessory, and he's going to use those handcuffs now to hook Petey in the corner. He's defenseless here. Oh, he's got Petey Williams hooked up, and you can see Rudy Charles going to try to get him loose, but unless he's got a key, I don't know. He's gonna, oh, I'm, I'm watching it. Storm. He goes oh. underneath. Yeah, he's got the beer bottle. You can see Rudy Charles trying to undo the turnbuckle there to get him out that way. Look out. Oh, no, 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 no. no, no. Come on. He's gonna, and we saw what he did. So, well, Kim, oh, wait, Gil Kim stops it, right? She won't let him use the beer bottle on him. Now Thank she God. goes over there to let him lose. Thank God for that. Uh, look, wait, Storm's frothing at the mouth of the mouth. Oh, no, he's got Gail Kim. Oh, she just smacked him right across the face. Oh, and he's mad. And now look at him, he's got him right there by the throat. He's got him losing here. Oh, God, he just took Gail Kim right down, and Petey's doing everything within his power to try and stop this, but he can't. Oh, a oh, nice low he, blow. She had to do it. He was going to hit her with the beer bottle, for God's sake. And he's going to fight back. Look at Gail go. Look at Gail Kim right there. She just absolutely goes nuts. She just bashed him in the back of the head. She just couldn't take it anymore. That, that level of frustration. So, yeah, look at this. Gail Kim's got the beer bottle. And the crowd wants her to level him with it. James Storm can't believe it, and this is her chance to get some revenge right here. Wait a minute, who just ran by us? What the world? What? Look, that's, that's Jackie? That's Miss Jacqueline? Yeah, she looks that sure is. What we is haven't seen her in years. Angels. What the heck is going on here? Look at her, she's just being brutal right now on Gail Kim. This, oh, what a clothesline right there. What an odd combination this is. How on earth? You got me. James Storm had Jackie there in his, in his corner the whole time, just waiting. This is, I, this is just got I don't bizarre. Know. I can't, Wait a I, minute. He's setting her up for the death sentence. No. Look at this. Off the top. Oh, oh and she caught him with the leg drop. Unbelievable. What a weird turn of events. And look at it, James Storm. With the celebration. As he takes Jacqueline, puts her over his shoulder. Gail Kim laid out. Let's take another look at that. What you just said. AMW, America's Most Wanted.
their patented finishing move, this time not employed by Chris Harris and James Storm, but by James Storm and Jacqueline? Cease and desist begins now. Our target, WWE Wrestling's headquarters. I just had a nightmare. Dumb to the extreme of doing something with a fat guy. Those imbeciles actually shot that segment on their television show. No more will they put the wrestling fans through that. Have you seen any of them? Have you seen any of the skits they do? It's almost... Jerry oh, it's on almost... Rock play. Shut up! Vince McMahon, come out with your pants up. Leave the fat, naked, oily guy in the building and surrender at once. You see, we caught wind that you wanted us to stop doing what we were doing. Hey, Vinny Mac, we told you. We told you we were coming by air. We told you we were coming by land. And we told you we were coming by sea. And I'll be damned if we ain't standing right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Where are you? So we have got a proposition that is legitimate and a proposition that you cannot refuse. We will put up one million dollars. One million dollars. These two son of a right here versus your two boys. 911 operator, what's your emergency? Help me, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, making their way into the impact zone, they are the voodoo. The appearance of, well, first BG James, and then Kip James behind him, coming to the ring, steel chairs in hand. BKM, the Voodoo Tin Mafia. I think it's safe to say that they've been stirring it up pretty good, T Dub. Well, with everything that's happened here as of, as of late, I'll be interested to hear what BKM's got to say and how they're going to handle things because when these two get together, there's no telling. Get the sensors out, get everybody out. There's no telling where they're gonna go. Totally unpredictable. You got that right. Well, we have decided to give BG James a live microphone. Cause the music. Let's hear what he has to say. You know, the old adage goes, war is hell. And sometimes it's very hard to declare a victor. But that's exactly what we came here to do tonight, is declare victory, BKM, over Vincent K. McMahon in the WWE. Ah, celebration time, a victory party for the Voodoo Kin Mafia. You see, we had no choice. Kip and I did everything we were supposed to do. Let's go down the laundry list. First off, we spent the night on the front porch of your palatial palace that you call Titan Tower. And what did you do? Not a damn thing. Secondly, we ambushed Paul Levesque at a WWE house show in Knoxville, Tennessee. And what did he do? Not a damn thing. On a side note though, Paul, nobody likes to see one of our boys go down. Heal your wheel, bro. Now, nice now then, thirdly, we went to lovely San Antonio, Texas, home of the historic Alamo in search of Michael Hickenbottom. Guess what? Michael Hickenbottom was a no-show. Now then, last but not least, we laid out the million dollar charity challenge. And you refused that, and that taught me two things about you. You're cowards, and you're stupid. You see, Vince, not only would you have gotten a million dollars, but you would have gotten ratings. And isn't that what it's all about, Vince, is ratings? And I'm not talking about the ratings that you got when you let Mr. Spears beat your champion on national TV.
No matter how many bones you fed him at the end of the show, he still did a job for that rapid piece of crap. Now then, I'm also not talking about not talking about the ratings where you have two celebrity lookalikes have a 10 minute match on your nationally televised show where you sat ringside. Vince, you sat ringside, so I know you heard the boos throughout the whole arena. Boo! Boo! And he also heard the chants from the crowd in St. Louis. And then, and I think now, as, then if it were, as if it were magic, those boos morphed into the chant, TNA, TNA. Well, Vince McMahon, all these chants got me to thinking. And they got me to realize that me and Kipper, maybe our battle in this war is over with and we have declared victory. But what it brings me to, what it brings me to now is the war that you still wage against all the great wrestling fans around the world. You see, one thing a person don't like is to have his intelligence insulted. And that's what you do week after week. You keep us bogged down in this quagmire that is WWE Raw. The people have spoken. I think it's time that the fans stand up and let their voices be heard. I think they show their purple index fingers like proud Iraqis at the voting station. I say the fans stick their heads out the window and scream, we're not gonna take it. Sing along, Doc. Hey. You couldn't have wrote that crap. <laughs> Because we're disposable? Those 
those women in the back. Val, Val, you, Tracy, Gail. They're not disposable. I am not disposable. I will continue to fight every single day to get into this ring. I want to wrestle too. I want to be a part of this business so bad. And why? Because I love it. I love it that much. Now, this might be the last time that I'm in this ring. Christy, 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 come in here. Come back here. Come here. Don't walk away like that. BG seems sympathetic to hey, her hey. plight. They said it. They said they want wrestling. I don't think they heard you. You said you want wrestling too. Hey, we all love this business. We all love this business. But let me tell you something. Half the things you're saying are simply not true. You know, sure, this is a man's sport, but there's plenty of room for everybody. You know what? Not all guys are like whoever burnt. Well, guess what? I'm one of them. Let me tell you something, you little slut. Hmm. Wow. I, don't, I, I don't think Kip is too sympathetic, do you? No, I don't think he's sympathetic. Maybe you at should all. just go back to that strip club you got fired at. Uh huh. But don't you ever. And I mean ever interrupt me again. Because you know what? Girls are good for two things. Uh-huh. Oh, no. Here. Oh. Hip, hip, go. Oh, oh, you're right. We are only good for two things. Our bodies. You see BG James holding a back. Oh, this got bizarre. Christy Hemi just put Kip James back in line. She just slapped the taste right out of Kip James' mouth and then starts off. BG holds his partner back. Did you ever see that one coming? No, I didn't see any of that coming. We're going to send it to the back. DB standing by with Team 3D. What a night, a wild night it's been here backstage. What a wild night out of the arena, and we're just getting started. Team 3D about to challenge the Latin American Exchange for the Tag Team Championship of the World. People want to know if we're ready. Have you ever known us not to be ready? Team 3D versus the LAX. The match the people have been dying for. The old school versus the new school. The old punks versus the young punks. LAX, you took out our brother Runt, so we took out Conan. We've been in a million matches without our brother next to us. You have never, ever been in a match without Conan at ringside. People have been coming up to us all week long. Brother Ray, Brother Devon, you ain't got nothing to worry about. These punks ain't been nowhere. They've never done anything. They haven't accomplished a damn thing in the wrestling business. You guys have been 900 time tag team champions. You've been all over the world. They ain't got nothing that you want. That's where the people are wrong. 
because we're actually jealous of LAX because they have something that we want and we want it bad. They have the glory and the prestige of knowing that they can wake up every morning and call themselves the NWA World Tag Team Champions. LAX, you also got one other thing. You got us to deal with. And fighting Team 3D is a lot easier said than done. Oh my brother, testify! Have you seen him anywhere? I haven't seen him. Boss, AKA Brother Run, Santa, on behalf of LAX and the Latino Nation, you, TNA, and all these gringos can go to hell. I would like for you to shut your dirty. LAX for the NWA World Tag Team Championship. Up next at Final Resolution, yes, we go to war. We go to war over the NWA World Tag Team titles. Get ready for 3D and LAX, and here are the taglines. Latin American Exchange, without question, meet their strongest challenge to date. We're talking about physicality in Team 3D. Part of 3D's master plan, the brains, Behind the LAX brawn, taken out. Conan's injured, no outside help. Brother Ray, Brother Devon, their focus, their sights on one thing, one thing only. Finally winning the NWA World Tag Team titles for the very first time. Gentlemen, the following contest is for the NWA World Tag Team Championship. Scheduled for one fall, introducing team number one, the challengers from New York City, Brother Ray, Brother Devon, they are by the one title that this tag team has not held to be. Like from the right colors to be known as the most decorated tag team in the history of the wrestling world. They want the NWA Tag Team Championship and only LAX stands in their way. You're not kidding. Everywhere they've wrestled, they've held the gold with the exception of one place. Right here in TNA. Hold your feet, all you want language. Speaking stupid, gringo, and bow down. Established that Moody Jack Melendez has returned to TNA. Kind of taking over at the mouthpiece right there. The old introductions, and you can see Brother Ray just looking right over the top of the rope, daring LAX to get in that ring. And you see Homicide just 
say whatever's on his mind as they're holding those belts and just kind of waving it in their faces. What did you think of the strategy from Brother Ray and Brother Deeb on this past Thursday night on Impact? Team 3D with the sniper attack. They laid out Conan. And I've been told that Conan underwent hip surgery in Mexico. Obviously, he's on the shelf. He's not in the corner of the Latin American exchange. And to me, that puts LAX at a decided, at a huge disadvantage. Well, Team 3D believes you cut the head off of the snake. And that's exactly what they did with Conan. They took him out, put him out. And now we're going to see how strong LAX is. Will they use this as motivation? Will they use this? and show us in the ring that they are the pure champions, that they can do it without Conan, because Conan can't be out there on the side, they can't be given the start. I, I'm sure that Homicide and Hernandez have had some conversation with Conan when it comes to formatting some kind of, of game plan or strategy for this tag title defense, but, well, you said it best. You take him away from ringside. You stop the opportunity for the outside interference that we've seen repeatedly from Conan, and to me, that diminishes the chances for the Latin American exchange to hang on to the NWA World Tag Team title. Well, you mentioned it, too, in, in your in your graphics about this is the most physical team that LAX has ever faced. And, and that just goes, you, know, you can just look at the, the ring and realize that. But there is one thing they do have, and that's Hernandez. And one thing about Hernandez, he is as strong as either Brother A or Brother Devon. And that comes from anybody that's been in the ring with him. He may have to really become the focal point for LAX and use homicide to dart in and dart out. But when you talk about the experience that Team 3D has, what an advantage that's got to be. I mean, you think of the recent rivals for the Latin American Exchange. AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels. Incredible athletes. X-Division stars, Don, at the same time. It was the America's most wanted team against the Latin American Exchange. No doubt. Paris and Storm, the most dominant tag team in TNA history. But now you're looking at Brother Ray, Brother Devon, and that's why we talked about this physical matchup that we've anticipated ever since we first heard that 3D and LAX are going to war. Well, the only issue Team 3D has is that they don't have those belts. You don't have the problems that AMW did. You don't have the size disadvantage that Daniels and Styles did. And look at Brother Devon, just one arm drag right after another, a nice drop kick. And pin attempt, lateral press here by Brother Devon, but the big man Hernandez able to get that shoulder up before referee Andrew Thomas counts three. Boy, this is something that they've been wanting, and they, they've been out of this title picture for a long time, and just to be back in this ring, and they're using what happened to Brother Run as, as motivation also, as if they needed any. I mean, you've heard it from Brother Ray. I know the conversations, I've overheard them. They have held tag team titles everywhere they've wrestled, from ECW to the WWE. Remember, Brother Ray said, heck, we've even been tag team champions for the Hustle promotion in Japan. But they still haven't been able to realize what they consider their destiny here in TNA by winning the NWA World Tag Team title belt. Well, that shows you the mindset. Homicide spits the gum at him. Brother Ray picks it up, chews it, spits it right back. I guess that shows them anything you got. We'll put it right back at you. And then you see the power of Brother Ray as he just slams on the side of the ground. Wow, that got, that's got to play in your mind right there, Mike. Look at the strength of Brother Ray. Oh, man, he just throws on the side across the ring. Just tossed him away. Want to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, you still have an opportunity to text your vote. TNA Mobile for the very first time. Yes, your chance to vote for Samoa Joe or Kurt Angle. Who's it going to be in the Iron Man match tonight? There you see the updated score, 43% for Kurt Angle, 57% for Samoa Joe. It's very easy to do. All you got to do is text the word Joe if you want to vote for Joe to 25,000. Text the word Kurt if you think Kurt's going to win the Iron Man match to 25,000. Remember, you're texting to 25,000 is the number. Series Joe or Kurt. Oh, yeah, shots by Hobbs. Side. Brother Ray gonna try and turn it around, shoots him off into the ropes, missed with the clothesline. That was kind of a unique leapfrog, wasn't it? Oh, look oh. at the power! That's what we're talking oh, about. Pin two, whoa! They've got to come up with another game plan, and you can see the look on Homicide's face. He's mad. There's just nothing he can do about it right now, but Brother Ray and Brother Devon got the game on. Again, shot off into the ropes. Homicide taken by Brother Ray and Brother Devon, able to connect with the leg drop. And he gets a near fall on Homicide. 
just these guys so much experience right there. But Homicide, nice counter using that head to get the shot onto the face of Brother Devon. And now look at Hernandez and that screen coming in. And that's what they're going to have to do is use that as much as they can. Well, I think Hernandez has to be the equalizer here for the Latin American exchange. And at the same time, you see that Homicide is going to use high risk moves like that. And Hernandez for the pin. Here's no, just barely a two count on Devon. A little too nonchalant right there on Devon as far as going for the pin, but they just shot the neck off the rope there as Homicide came over. And wow, look at that. They're just trading blows. Man, I love oh, you. What can... a mid ring exchange. Big Devon getting the better of it until Hernandez connects with a perfectly placed knee right into the gut. Well, I'm sure Brother Devon realizes that was like hitting a rock right there with Hernandez, and now you're going to have to use the quickness on the side if you have a shot at this. Reverse chin lock now applied by Homicide. I think this is a smart move. Wear Devon down. You let the big man Hernandez come in, take that physical control back. Homicide. Oh, man, just caught that time as Devon came charging, springing off the ropes, and drilled him right in the chest with the elbow. Going to turn it over to Big Brother Ray. Oh, just holds him in place right there. Caught him first. Big exchange now. Brother Ray, open-handed. He's getting the better of it. Oh, look at Brother Ray right there. Just one shot after another. And then throws on the side out. And then you could just see it's become a fight all right into the rail with viciousness and homicide doing everything he can. But Brother Ray is too big, too strong, and then throws it right back into the ring. Now homicide and Brother Devon. And the tag is in Hernandez now, the legal man. Great move here by Homicide to take Brother Devon, position him on their side of the ring so that when Hernandez comes in, he's close by, and they just continue the advantage. You heard that one. That's amazing. Homicide able to survive that. If you see Hernandez able to absolutely go right over there and give a shot to Brother Ray, which you've got to do every chance you can. Oh, Homicide coming right over, and then one after another, and then the power of Hernandez. Pin now, homicide to cover, and oh, a two count only. NWA World Tag Team titles on the line, the Latin American Exchange defending against Team 3D, and you know what? I think they they miss Conan yes. to a certain extent, not having him around ringside. And obviously, that level of confidence that he gives them, but at the same time, you've got to be impressed yes. with how both Homicide and Hernandez have fared here against Team 3D without their leader. Absolutely, a lot of quick tabs. They know they can't keep one person in there too long or Team 3D will kill you. And look at this, one tag after another. They keep Devon planted over here on this side. Double team from the chance. Oh, nice double close line off the ropes right there. Devon takes down both Homicide and Hernandez. Brother Ray waits in the corner. Looks like Brother Ray's been cut over the top of his, uh, over his eye, eyelid, as we see Devon now shot up into the ropes, and Devon puts the shoulder right into Hernandez, and then drops Homicide down. I thought he was going to tag Brother Ray in, but oh! he's doing pretty damn well himself. It's a saving grace right there. Good night. Oh, oh look man, at that Homicide just met with that clothesline. Attention turned to Hernandez, who reverses, shoots Devon off, missed in the corner, and Devon connects with the clothesline off the ropes. Here's the cover. Here's two. No. This is where they need Conan right here. Conan right here would be getting them fired up, but it's worked right in the Team 3D's favor. They got Conan out, and now they know they're just so much more cohesive with all that years of experience, and they have LAX on the ropes. Homicide goes up to the middle rope. Hernandez takes Devon. Backdrop suplex. Here comes Homicide with the elbow across the chest. Nice elbow as Brother Ray looks on, knowing there's nothing he can do. And now Hernandez going for the pin. And Devon just, Brother Devon just gets that shoulder up. Oh, Brother Ray is just dying to get into this match. You can just feel it. You, you can just feel that intensity as Brother Ray would love to get the tag. And he's trying to make a blind tag, even if he can here. But you see that Hernandez just positioned Devon off to the side. Got, got Brother Devon a little too close, but now you see Brother Devon brings him over the corner, and now they get the tag in, and this is what Team 3 does. D does best. Well, oh, you're right. First the clothesline by Devon, then the tag in. Brother Ray's legal. Take Homicide out of the matchup. Now concentrate on Hernandez. Oh, a little scoop and a slam right there, and then he sets up the upright to see if he can hit it. 
Right through the goal post with that forehand. Here oh. comes Devon. Oh, he nails it dead on. 3D has turned this thing around, and the challengers with the opportunity to finally get the NWA tag title. Homicide back into play. And here's the 3D as they've nailed it right there on Homicide. Uh, he wasn't the legal man, however. And you can see they've got Hernandez outside as he's, he looks like he hit that the steel steps out there too. And what, who's it? I still got the sandwich. Is he drunk? He is! You think? He's like smashed! Brother Runt of Team 3D. Well, you can see the referee, Andrew Thomas, he takes a big old swig. Brother Runt hitting the sauce. Oh, and man. comes off the top and crashes down on the hook. Where'd he go? He's disqualified it right here. It's just, he went this, oh man, look at the look on Brother Ray's face. Ladies and gentlemen, Team 3D have been disqualified. The winners of the match is a result of a disqualification and still NWA World Tag Team Champions, LAX. This just went bad for Team 3D. I'm not looking for the right. He's just taking it to Brother Ronnie Kevin He just caught the, something they've been looking for for so long. I mean, that's really the key right there. Brother Run comes out obviously inebriated and cost his brothers their opportunity and their shot at the NWA World Tag Team titles. Wow. Oh, this just ended so badly. Team 3D was totally in control. And Brother Run causes the disqualification. Bizarre. What an event it's been at Final Resolution. I'm going to remind you, still to come, Samoa Joe, Kurt Angle, and I think we've got the results from the text vote in, Don. And we'll see what it is right there. The final vote is in, and it came out. The people have spoken. They believe that Samoa Joe has got the momentum to win the rubber match here. 57% to 43%. And keep in mind, stakes have been added for this Iron Man matchup because the winner will get a world's title shot. We're going to send it to the back. JB standing by with Samoa Joe. JB, it's all yours. Some very strong words from Kurt Angle in your direction, Samoa Joe, as you are about to step into the 30-minute Ironman matchup. The World Heavyweight title shot it against all odds now on the line as well. The stakes have been raised. Angle, welcome to the end game. Angle, welcome to the climax. Angle, welcome to our final resolution. You see, when we started this, it was about pride. It was about who was better, who was the best in the world. And when you realize who was the best, Kurt, you decided to make it personal. You made this personal! So, Kurt, I give you this promise. For your crimes, for what you have done to me, I will torture you. For 30 minutes, I will pummel you. For 30 minutes, I will beat you into the ground until you realize that you cannot handle what you have unleashed. For not only have you transgressed against me, Kurt, now you stand in the way of what I want most, the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Kurt, I promise you this. You will be broken. Samoa Joe, the longest unbeaten streak in TNA history. Undefeated no more. The streak is over. The year and a half undefeated streak of the Samoan submission machine. Samoa Joe has come to an end. Kurt Angle, a champion everywhere he has been. After I beat Samoa Joe, I realized this kid deserves a second chance. Win, lose, or draw. This is my last match with Samoa. Yeah, he tapped out! Joe's won! Kurt Angle doesn't tap out. Samoa Joe, I gave you a chance of redemption. I want a rematch! As far as I'm concerned, you've lost. You've been broken. Oh. As much as you want a rematch, I'm sorry, Kurt. But we're done. I can't stand the fact that Samoa Joe has beaten Kurt Angle. Samoa Joe! I want my rematch! No, you got it! You got it! You got your rematch! Now, 
The third and final chapter will be written. Three months of drama. Oh my God, what a picture this is! Here comes Joe! Three months of rage will all culminate in 30 minutes of fury. If you can see the melee, it's security pulling up a bar! 30 minutes of agony. The streak is over! The year and a half undefeated streak has come to an end! 30 minutes of pure, unadulterated hatred. Samoa Joe, Kurt Angle, a 30-minute Iron Man match. Retribution will be paid in full. It's the third and final chapter. Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle, the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe, a 30-minute Iron Man match. Ladies and gentlemen, TNA's final resolution continues with an Iron Man match. The competitor to score the most pitfalls or submissions in 30 minutes will be declared the winner. Introducing first, from American Samoa, he is the Samoan Submission Machine, Samoa Yes, it's final resolution, and it's finally going to be resolved. Scoreboard, Samoa Joe won, Kurt Angle won. This is the rubber match. Jim Cornette decided we'll make an Iron Man rule. Most falls in 30 minutes to win it, and the winner gets a world title shot. And his opponent from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, he is pro wrestling's only Olympic gold medalist. He is Kurt Angle! And you can just feel the excitement level, the tension. This is one of those things that you dream about. And we've watched this develop from the very first headbutt that Kurt Angle gave Samoa Joe, and it's culminated to this. A 30-minute Iron Man match. You know when it starts and you know when it ends, and you better get as many pins and submissions as you can in that time. These two have been about as even as you can be, Mike, from the start. Somebody with a great champion like Kurt Angle, and then of course the two blood like Samoa Joe, and wow. I can't believe it's here. How about the icing on the cake? Jim Cornette from TNA Management says we're gonna raise the stakes. It's not only this rivalry, this grudge between these two that's been so competitive, and recently it's been fueled by that, that personal attack that we saw by Kurt Angle recently on Thursday Night Impact. But then when Cornette dangles the biggest carrot of all and gives an NWA World Heavyweight title shot to the winner of this match, just makes it bigger than ever. Uh, and you know what, when you watch out this, this whole thing came about. I love that move by Jim Cornette because in my mind, after whoever wins this, after what they thought through, deserves the title shot. And we will have an NWA World Champion after the Elimination Rules match later on tonight. And then we'll know who they're gonna face. I mean, think about how important these next two matches are. Almost like taste great, less filling. Yeah. If you can hear this crowd as they chant for both Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe, you text message to TNA Mobile and you said Samoa Joe 57%, Kurt Angle 43%, and it's probably split just about like that here in the Impact Zone at Final Resolution. And you know what, that is an amazing thing to me is, is that, the, that the crowd would feel that way. I mean, here's a man with the resume like Kurt Angle. You would think, I mean, I thought he might dominate that from the public just for so many people that might not know the history of Samoa Joe, but I'll tell you something, the TNA fans have seen this guy develop in the close to two years that he's been here. They know what Samoa Joe is all about. They know this guy is going to be a champion for a lot of years to come, and they voted accordingly. Just shows the level of respect that the fans have for Samoa Joe. That sort of respect comes when you have a year and a half winning streak, doesn't it? Check this out. Angle sent out to the floor, and Joe just challenging him, getting right in his face daring him to get back inside the six sides. Mike, how much of this match in your mind is about pacing? Is about just finding every chance you can to catch every breath that you can. You know no matter what, you're going another 28 minutes. And then when an opportunity comes, you've got to put it all on the line. You have to. Because, Don, it is, in that 30-minute time limit, the most pins are submissions, and, and who knows how many that's going to be. It could end up one to nothing. 
Sure, you're right. Yes, it's about pacing, but at the same time, boy, Don, you can't wait. You can't sit back. You can't really be defensive about it. You've got to go on the offense. You've got to get that first ball and then react accordingly. You know, it's, it's so much strategy that's got to be involved in a match like this. I, I wonder how guys are going to react when they get into submission holds. I mean, it's, it's, it's just so much going on out there in these guys minds they have to really look at the big picture Mike. and you would have to anticipate that the possibility sure exists for us to see pinfalls via submission falls won by submission i mean let's face it per angle he's got the ankle lock samoa joe that kakina clutch that rear naked choke that garnered him so many victories in that year and a half winning streak You'll notice that Kurt Angle takes every chance that he can to get out of the ring, size things up. I think that's his experience. I think he knows after what happened the second match when, when Samoa Joe won that there's no more of that intimidation factor that he had to think that had to be going through Joe's mind at some point. I mean, until you beat somebody, you always wonder if you can. Well, he knows that Samoa Joe can beat him. And Samoa Joe knows that he can beat him. And that's why it's going to be mind games. Oh, nice shot by Angle off the rope. Angle leaves his feet to drive his shoulder right into Samoa Joe, and he, he took Samoa Joe, the 280-pounder, right down to the canvas. The measuring here in setup, European uppercut rocks and snaps the head of Samoa Joe back with last style, and again, there it is. He catches it right under that chin. Oh, nice shot there. As he saw Joe try to give a shot back, but a third shot underneath the chin, and man, that just put Joe to the mat. Did you see that one? Then Angle answered that one punch from Joe with a short right, and then connected with another uppercut. I think he realized he stunned him. I mean, that's one of those things, too. You hit it right, you know, I mean, a guy can bite his tongue off. I mean, literally. That could happen with a shot like that to the lower jaw. Reversal now. Angle fired into the corner, turnbuckles, then comes out, and Joe meets him right in mid-ring and decks him with a clothesline. You know, the amazing thing about watching Samoa Joe here in TNA is, is maybe your first impression when you see him, but within 10 seconds of seeing him in the ring, all you see is a vicious killer. I mean, somebody that will stop at nothing to inflict pain, and he's done it with against anybody and everybody. It's what I tell everybody about Samoa Joe. It's that old cliche, don't judge that book by its cover. Watch Samoa Joe, oh, and, and there you go. And he'll blow you away you, with a move like that. You never imagine a guy that size is gonna kick up that eye. And he'll do it all through a match. Pin, here's two, here's no, no. just two as we approach the five minute mark. Five minutes gone in this 30 man Iron Man rules matchup. Again, most pins, most submissions in that half hour to be declared the winner of the rubber match. I mean, that's a big leg to be kicked by. I mean, that the weight behind it is unreal. And now, look at Joe as he places the arm behind his shoulder right there. You can see the pain on Kurt Angle's face as he's trying to maneuver out. But you don't want to get into mat wrestling with the Olympic gold medalist. That can go bad for you in a hurry. Front face lock now applied by Samoa Joe as Kurt Angle Tries to power him into the corner, gets the break from the referee, and on the break from Earl Hebner, Kurt Angle first with the shoulder, and then the repeated kicks. I think that's a smart move here by Angle. Look what he's doing to Joe. Well, he knows that Joe, away. He knows that Joe had that knee problem a while back, and he's going right at it, maybe to see if he can expose it again. Joe not showing any weakness on it, but a couple shots like that he, might bring that, that pain. And look at this. Look at the oh, strength. Oh my. Belly to belly, releases him overhead. You know what? He should be proud of a move like that. Think of the double effect that those kicks have. They not only limit Joe and take away his advantage and his opportunity to use those various kicks that he loves to employ. At the same time, you weaken Samoa Joe for a potential ankle lock by Kurt Angle. Oh, man, he applies the foot right into the windpipe. Anything you can to take the air away from your opponent where you can't catch your breath, especially this early in the match, it's got to be a big advantage. And look at Kurt just showing that strength, and I don't know how many shots you can give a guy that can size. Go. Just barely got the one count off the backdrop suplex before Joe able to power Angle off. Well, I was surprised at how quickly Joe was able to kick out after that move. And Angle going to try and neutralize him again. It's back to the basics with a move like this, but this one is so effective because he's not only keeping Samoa Joe down on the mat, but 
which you talked about earlier, taking his wind away from him, and referee Earl Hebner checking so closely to see if it's a choke. And obviously, Earl Hebner just, you say, just inches away. And look at his face, Mike. Yeah, I mean, look at the face of Samoa Joe. His eyes, eyes are rolling in his head. He, he can't breathe. I mean, maybe it'd be smart right here to get yourself out of this hold. I mean, it's... Well, that's easy for you to say, isn't it? You don't have an Olympic gold medalist trying to hold you down in the middle of the ring. Oh, I was just thinking maybe even go ahead and, and give yourself up one. All I was saying, I mean, really? you still got 22 minutes. Oh. That's what I was thinking, but Joe able to fight it off. And angle connects, knee to the midsection, lateral press the cover in a two count. It goes right back to the pit, I love that. What tenacity, and when it comes to intensity, let's face it, you've never seen anybody in professional wrestling no. more intense than Kurt Angle. Again, basics, snap mayor, and then neutralizing Samoa Joe. Right back at it again as he puts that, that elbow right underneath the chin, and you can see Joe just having a hard time catching that breath. The, the, the thing about this is for either wrestler, if you do get pinned or you do submit, this match is not over. No, but it puts you at quite a yeah. disadvantage, doesn't it? Especially when you look at a clock that's nearing 21 and a half minutes. We're eight and a half minutes in. We've yet to have a pin or a submission for either Samoa Joe or Kurt Angle. So in the back of your mind, you've got to be thinking, well, th this could be a tough position if you fell down one zip. Absolutely. I mean, you, I mean, I don't know you would go defensive this early, but I mean, right now, Samoa Joe is just lifeless down there. And I mean, you can see Rafael Hebner checking. But I mean, the eyes, it looks like he's, he's about to pass out and he's fighting to come too. And somehow Joe works himself around and gets his foot on the ropes right there. You, you got might, it on there? You, you might, yeah, yeah, he's got it. Yeah. Henry Hebner's gonna take Kurt Angle and make him break. You might say it's fortunate that Samoa Joe found the ropes. At the same time, ring awareness. And, and even when Kurt Angle was wearing him down and you talked about, you saw the eyes rolling in the back of his head, taking his breath, taking his wind away, Joe was still able to get the rope break. Well, he just goes for them uppercuts one after another. Now he kicks Joe back down. Kurt Angle knows he's got Joe in a very vulnerable position right here. But he has, but the thing is, is he can, he's got to take advantage of it, Mike, if he doesn't get a pin or a submission. As we see Moody Jack Melendez and Willie Arena describing the action. If he doesn't get one now, he might be missing a huge opportunity. Spanish broadcast team looks on. They're as interested as we are in this Iron Man match, and could this be the move that Samoa Joe needs to turn the matchup around? Angle's been in control. He has been, and Joe needed something like this to counter Kurt Angle and just find some way, but you could check out the clock. We're yeah. under 20 minutes, 10 minutes in to the 30-man Iron Man match, and here's the exchange. Who's going to get the better of it? Momentarily, Joe, series of shots, rock Angle. But look at the quick reversal. Shoots Joe off, who puts on the brakes, and oh! there goes Angle to the floor. Nice counter right there. Now, this is a great opportunity for Samoa Joe. He's got Kurt Angle outside. It's a chance for him to catch his breath. He's going right after him. Wow! He goes right through the ropes and knocks Kurt Angle into the rail, and it looked like Joe caught his head also. Wow! And you're not kidding it, Dead Boy. We gotta have another look at this one, guys, in the truck. It was a, it was a move where Joe exposes himself when he goes flying right through the ring ropes. When he crashes down into Angle, you're right, Don. It looked at the same time like he caught his head on the guardrail. I don't know if we can see that again here, but right now you see. Okay, we can see right now with the action that, that Joe grabs him and pulls him right back into the ring. I'll tell you what, he, if he would have hit him a little cleaner, that might have just put Angle out. You're right, pin attempt now as Angle's rolled back in. But no, Samoa Joe, you can sense the frustration here. The hands on the hips, hitting himself in the head, almost as if, what do I have to do? And here comes Angle right back. And when you get the momentum, you've got to just apply the pressure so much and try to get a point of, oh, what a power slam. I mean, he just snaps it off, follow cover, two count. It's amazing how he did. It looked like it looked like Joe was out of breath, but now look at that face. You can feel it coming back. He's shaking it all off, and he knows he's got the momentum here, Mike. Big power move puts momentum on the side of Samoa Joe. Iron Man rules, rubber match to decide this best of three. Look out. Oh, man. Overhead release suplex. Yes, the Olympic gold medalist 
He just takes Samoa Joe and tosses that 280 around, doesn't he? Follow cover, Joe's got the shoulder up before three. 12 minutes gone right here, less than 18 to go. Nobody has got a pin or a submission at this point. And again, keep in mind, the winner of this matchup will go on to face the winner of the three-way bout upcoming for the NWA World's Heavyweight title. That all goes down. Next month, and against all odds, Angle fired off into the corner. Here comes Joe. Caught him with that forearm shot right into the chest. Joe trying to set Kurt Angle up here to be able to apply something that he can really take. Oh, going for that muscle buster. Exactly what he's going to go for. He's got the corner. corner of it. Oh, Angle fights Look at Angle go through. Oh, and Joe able to roll through and avoid the pin attempt. Oh, Here wait a minute. Rear Look naked choke. This. Rear naked choke. Katina clutch applied. Ring positioning perfect. He's right in the center. middle. Middle of this exciting ring. What are you going to do, Angle? Oh, this is a. You got. You can't let go here at all. You've got to hold on with everything you've got. He oh, tapped. look at that. He, he tapped. tapped out. Joe wins fall one. Ladies and gentlemen, Samoa Joe wins fall number one. It is one zero. Samoa Joe. You know, that might have been a good move there by Kurt Angle. I think what you're talking about is you're, you're anticipating the same thing I am as you see the scoreboard showing Samoa Joe going up 1-0 as we are under 17 minutes in this Iron Man match. I think what you were going to say was you feel, as you hear the crowd chanting, you tapped out. You think that Angle may have tapped out quickly so that he did not get totally worn down and taken out by that rear naked choke. That's experience right there, Mike, because, the, I mean, he was, he realized he was in the middle of the ring. You said it. He had him perfectly placed in the middle. He was not getting to the ropes to break it. And, I mean, the longer he holds him there, I mean, it, it, look, eventually he's going to pass out. So I think that was one of those moves where, okay, it's risky. It's risky, but you get out of the hold and you get your bearings. The pressure cooker that is this Iron Man match, and... What does the pressure now go on the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle? Down, one nothing to Samoa Joe, and took a shortcut right there. Break the eyes of Joe, caught him with a big blow to the side of the head. I mean, when you're in a match for 30 minutes, in my opinion, there are no shortcuts. <laughs> you're going to be stuck no matter what. Oh, but you've got, sometimes you've got to do anything you can to change the momentum into your favor. And Look Joe, Angle, and, and just, Kurt Angle's done it. You just talked about it. Angle just rocked Joe, and you see Joe holding on to his jaw because I think that last right hand was right on the money. Well, you can see him now. He's pulling on the neck of, of Joe, and you can feel he's just going at it a little stronger. And he knows he's got to do the same thing with Joe. He's got to make him tap out to tie this up. And look at him just pull back and grind, and he's positioned perfectly on the back of Samoa Joe. Oh, you're not kidding. Cranking back with that reverse chin lock. Samoa Joe fighting through the pain and pressure. Referee Earl Hebner, well, you have to admit, he has been right on top of this situation the entire matchup as we reach the halfway point of the Iron Man bout. We're under 15 minutes. Samoa Joe leads one to nothing. Oh, just fighting it with everything he can. He can, yeah, he can see. He's just trying to do anything I think he can to get his breath. And now he just uses brute strength to get to all fours, and that's what he had to do. That's step number one. Step two is to get back up to the vertical base. He's accomplished that. Tries the elbows. It caused Angle to break the hole, but Angle goes right back. Slam! Here comes! Oh! Up to that Olympic slam to take him overhead. But Joe was ready. Talk about well scouted. Wow, I mean, Samoa Joe, I think that was one of those that he was expecting the whole time and what he would do, and he was prepared. And then he comes off those ropes and hits him with that flying knee. Holy cow, he just leveled. Look, Kurt at, Angle. look at him pick the Olympic gold medalist up by the singlet and goes right back again. Oh, here's Angle Lock up. Oh, wait a minute, he's got it! He's got the ankle lock in it. And again, look where he's got him. Oh, he's got him in the middle there. And it looks like Joe's a, a little closer to the ropes. Oh, he taps down and he does the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, Kurt Angle wins a fall there, tied at one fall each. I'm going to try and get inside the mind of Samoa Joe here and, and agree with you and say that much like what we saw earlier with Kurt Angle, I think Samoa Joe tapped out at that point, maybe even quicker than we've seen in the past from the ankle lock, because he knew in his mind on what the situation was. Caught in the middle of the ring, angle with the ankle lock, perfectly applied, and I think he feels like if I tap out now, yes, it evens it at 1-1, but it doesn't injure my ankle to and the point where I'm not able to continue and lose the match to Angle because of that. Well, look at the way he's limping. Obviously, Kurt Angle has such a great grip on that ankle lock. Obviously, because, I mean, Joe right now still can't even... 
can't even walk straight. I mean, he really tore into that ankle. I think the pain was so sheer, he had to get out of it, like you said, that quickly. It just makes things right back to even. But you gotta wonder what it does mentally, and you gotta wonder how bad he hurt his ankle. And of course, you mentioned it earlier, and I think it bears repeating, Samoa Joe recently suffering that knee injury, and you, you see that knee brace that Samoa Joe wears to the ring. And it's almost like it's a target for Kurt Angle, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's, it's a bullseye. No doubt about it, he's gone after it. Man, what a shot. Off the uppercut, lateral press, and two, no. How good is that strategy looked by Kurt Angle earlier when he tapped out quickly, when he knew he was in the center of the ring? Now look at him, he's got Joe everywhere he wants him. He's, he's getting ready to take a lead right here if he can keep this up because Joe is on his back in the middle of the ring. Boy, it looks brilliant at this point that Angle has evened it up. Yes, scoreboard 1-1. One, one. As we approach 12 minutes in the Iron Man match, and again, Samoa Joe on his back. Again, Kurt Angle in control. Referee Earl Hebner right on the spot. We're under 12 minutes now, making sure that that is not a chokehold. You could, again, Joe's got to get back up. You can see, you can see Joe talking to himself, screaming at Kurt. I couldn't read his lips, but he's got fight. There's no doubt about it. As he rolls over, one thing he does have is a, is a slight weight advantage on Kurt Angle, and he's using it every chance he can. I mean, that's. I mean, think about it. With Kurt Angle. With, Rush the Olympics, they're, they're the weight classes for a reason, and Joe knows that he uses that weight. Oh, man. Tried to catch him, and now look at this. Angle caught him. No, two count before Joe powers out. It was another attempt at the Olympic slam. And it was Samoa Joe taking Kurt Angle over, not going for the Olympic slam. Look out, take a lock again here. Oh, man, it, right now, Kurt Angle's doing everything that he wants to do, and Samoa Joe knows it. He's got to look at him screaming in pain. He's on the same leg, and he can just feel. Oh, he's twisting it, twisting it. Oh, he's gonna yeah, have he to tap out again. Ladies and gentlemen, Kurt Angle wins the fall. Kurt Angle leading two falls to one. Wow, Kurt Angle turned this thing around. He was down, but now the strategy is brilliant, and now. You can almost start to go a little defensive. There's really? Still, well, there's a lot of time left. You're right. You're I'm talking sorry. about Samoa Joe. I know You're it. You're talking about a man who had a year and a half winning streak. You're talking about an individual who went up one nothing in this match with the rear naked choke. And only one to, mistake can be costly only too. To You're fall right. Behind two to one after a pair of ankle lock submissions. But if he could get another pinfall or submission in there, it oh. would be time to play a little defensive. He could get a lead of two. Let's watch and see how it plays out because you know Samoa Joe has got to turn it up. He's got to take it to another level at this point. He's got to don't look at him come try and fight out of the corner before Angle stops him right in his tracks again. And he's still limping on that ankle. I mean, he just absolutely ripped that ankle twice and you can see Samoa Joe having a hard time getting his balance and his footing. Under 10 minutes, not cutting time here for Samoa Joe. Down two to one, Iron Man rules, NWA World Heavyweight title on the line as well as the pride and honor of saying that I won this best of three series and look at Angle is just relentless working on the injured leg of Samoa Joe. So much about being defensive, he's just being aggressive and, I, I, and that's got to mentally right now be wearing on Samoa Joe. Knowing you're behind and knowing that this guy is, is trying to really put you away and look at these uppercut shots. Kurt Angle throws him in against him, wow! Joe, just everything he had right there, Mike, he came off those ropes, and it was like a desperation clothesline. Had to dig down deep, it's exactly what he did, and you called it. Clothesline coming out of the corner, and here goes Joe. Oh, he's so dangerous here. Punches, open hand, palm thrust, a little bit of everything, rights and lefts, and angle shot off into the corner, here comes the freight train. Oh, wow, that knee oh. just climbed the ladder right and there. nailed him. You see where that knee connected? Oh. Put him right underneath the jaw. I don't Oh no, he's got the muscle buster. Can he get it? He didn't get it last time. He couldn't get it in. Is he going to get a hold of it here? He's got it all again. No, Kurt no, Angle three. fights out. One, two. Oh, no. oh wow. How and about the way Angle was holding on to that top rope in the corner on the muscle buster? Did that? Unbelievable as Kurt Angle turns it right around. Olympic slam. One, one two. two. One. Oh, I thought he was going up three to one, but Joe able to get his shoulder up, and Angle can't believe it. 3-1 at this point. I mean, it would almost have to be insurmountable, wouldn't it? I mean, you hate to say that oh, against yeah. Samoa Joe, but that could have been the one right there. Instead, 2-1, to one, Kurt Angle, pair of ankle locks, 
straps down. I didn't know if he could turn it and take it to another level, oh, but no. there it is again. This is it. This, 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 this. He's already wore this thing out. Whoa! Nice move right there by Joe as he was able to get the leverage and he countered it. Now he's got to take advantage of it. Under eight minutes, Joe able to roll through. Stop the angle, ankle lock. Imperative for Samoa Joe to get back on track. Muscle Buster out of the corner. Can he get out of it again? Not Go. this time! Not this time! Pin this One, time! One, two, got him! It's tied up! Ladies and gentlemen, Samoa Joe wins the fall. They are tied in two falls apiece. Wow! Twice he was able to get out of that muscle buster. I'm surprised he went for it again because it seemed like Angle had the answer for it every time, Mike. But he just figured one of these times he was going to hit it. We talked about the high stakes, high pressure matchup here. And how impressed are you with Samoa Joe to be able to dig down deep and even this baby up at two to two. Look at both these guys right now. They're both taking advantage of this. They've been going for 23 minutes. They're both getting a breather. They know that. They, it's tied up. You're on even playing field. Whoever's got the most in these next seven minutes wins this matchup and Joe gets to his feet first. You're right. The Samoan submission machine still favoring the injured leg. But he moves in on angle. First it's the right. Another right. That one into the chest. Left hand now. Just series of shots in the corner by Samoa Joe as he continues to weaken angle. That time an uppercut from Joe. Crowd feeling the momentum switch here. As you can hear them. Then. Of course, the crowd has been so divided between these two. And, oh, oh, man. Oh, move as he goes low. Did you see that? Took it the knee right out. He put all of his body weight behind that shoulder block that was directly standing to the knee. I don't think we have to tell you how important the next pinner submission is in this matchup that's tied 2-2. Oh, and again, he's got it applied in while. Look at that right there. As you can see, Kurt Angle just trying a different variation and he rolls and he's it got right it again. into where he wants. And again. Oh no. Dead center, middle of the ring, ankle lock applied. What do you do here? He's in the middle of the ring. Oh, you beat him early. Under six minutes. You, you got I've, to try to hold on, don't uh, you? I don't know if that strategy works here, but at the same time, Don, if you don't tap out, you could end up with a broken ankle. You're right. And because let me tell you something, he's not letting up. He's pulling because he's going for the tap and now he gets to his feet. He's getting the leverage in again. That's the move. That's the second That's time the you're able counter. to do it. Use your free leg. Use your good leg to kick off. It worked that time. It's still a wobbly and a hobbling Samoa Joe who catches Angle and turns him around. Oh, look. Oh, wait a minute. He rolls him up. One, two. Oh, my God. He's taking the lead. Kurt Angle wins the ball. Kurt Angle ahead three to two. What a move by Angle. Just when we've seen the submission moves on display, he used technique and he used his body weight. He got in a perfect position. All of his weight down across Samoa Joe. There was no way that Joe was going to kick out. It's three to two angle and we're under five minutes. I was watching Joe's body language. He looked up at referee Earl Hebner and he yelled five to find out how much time he had left. And he has five minutes, less than five minutes, and he knows now he has got to absolutely go on a tear. He can't hold back for a second because he to win, he's gonna tie this up first. You're right, all the pressure's on Samoa Joe. And he really, at this point, needs to put on that full court press. That's what we're seeing. Oh, you're gonna see now maybe some stall tactic by Kurt Angle, and I, Joe realizes it, and he goes right out after him. He can't afford it. You know, I'm not sure whether the blow sent Angle out to the floor or what you're saying, that Angle dropped down to avoid Joe. Joe follows up. The advantage that he has, but Angle stops him outside. Look at Angle fight back. Well, he knows that he can keep the fight out here. All that's going to do is let the clock tick. True, true, and that clock ticks down as, ladies and gentlemen, we go under four minutes in the Iron Man matchup, 3-2 per Angle. That was everything we... Oh, man, now Kurt Angle back in the ring. Samoa Joe's time is against him. Oh, and Kurt Angle knows it and goes right after him. And Joe still favoring the knee as well. That's something that you have to keep in the back of your mind as we see Angle in the lead and in control. Shots to the head of Samoa Joe. Just keeping him down and keeping him in the corner. Look yeah. at Angle. He's relentless for under three and a half. I'm going to tell you, if he can get another ankle lock in, he's going to do everything he can, I think, to hold on to it for the duration. Oh! Look at the power! Holy cow! Kurt Angle went a little too strong and Joe was waiting.
fighting for it and use that strength and slam him back down, but he's got to get a pin or a submission or it's gonna be futile. Simply what it was, pure raw strength enables Joe to drive Angle down to the canvas. Joe momentarily now in charge, but the clock ticks under three minutes. I know there's a title shot waiting for the winner, but right now I don't even think that's on their minds. I think it was motivation to, in, to get into this match, but right now it's just about winning. They know that whoever wins this has the bragging rights. Oh, and, oh he takes the ankle right into the ring post. He just wrapped it right around the steel, oh, and it does it a second time. And all the time is doing is just ticking out for Samoa Joe. Kurt Angle with an incredible advantage. It's time that Samoa Joe has to dig down deep and mount some kind of a comeback for Kurt Angle. The control that he has and the lead that he has at three to two is gonna gain him a victory here, but Joe's gotta do it. Joe's gotta pull out all the stops. He's gotta throw him in and get in there quickly. Don't give Kurt Angle a chance to set himself up. But if he can, Kurt Angle will try to ride this thing out. The clock two becomes the whole the minutes, story at minutes. this point as we go under two minutes with Kurt Angle up three to two. You can see he's still favoring the knee, but still able to get enough power behind him and then the open hand slap to the chest. Oh man, nice slap oh, by Angle, kick. answered by the Joe kick, here it comes. He got another muscle buster in. And look at this, he hits it! He's gonna He's even it gonna up here! It up here right comes here! Here. One, one, two, two we're tied! Wait, he got his foot on the rope! You've got to be kidding! Holy cow, I thought it was tied up! We're under a minute and a half. Kurt Angle, able to get his foot on the rope, but that, you know what? Joe can't, that can't get him down at no. this point. Well, you've, he, got to, you've got to mentally be tough to the point that you fight through that. Yes, you hit your patented move. Yes, you hit the muscle buster. And look at Angle get defensive right now as Joe went for the rear naked choke. And Angle goes right back to the basics and now goes right to the ankle lock, but Joe kicks out. Couldn't get a grip on it. Look at the clock. Oh, oh, he's got to go for it. Rear got naked it. choke, but Angle in total defensive move, mode here. Not allowing Samoa Joe to get that rear naked choke cinched in. He's trying to do everything he can to tie this up. And look at Angle fighting it off, rolls him off. Anything. And Joe goes right back at him. He can't let up. We're at 40 seconds. Look at him playing the elbows. Just anything he can to break a grip. And at the same time, to try and stop Angle from being so defensive. Joe now in the And Joe's got the angle lock applied and we're under 30 seconds. Oh, he's going to try to beat Angle in his own game to tie this up. Holding on to that angle. Can, can Kurt hold on for 20 more seconds? Oh, and he's Joe applied it even up. harder. Kurt applies all the pressure. This is incredible. Kurt Angle trying to get to the ropes. Here we go. Is he going to tap? Is he going to tap? Is he going to tap? No, no, no way. Can he hold he's on? He's trying to get the ropes. Can't believe he did. He heard him tap, but the clock get ticked off. Oh, he tapped all right. He tapped at 30 minutes and one second. Wow. Kurt Angle has won. Kurt Angle gets the title shot. Well, there's no question about that. Kurt Angle, yes, definitely the number one contender for the world title. Next month, you know what? He's going to face the winner of our three-way that is yet to come tonight at Final Resolution. The question I have, what about Samoa Joe? Where does Samoa Joe go from here to the back? JB and Sting, Angle wins the Iron Man. What a night it's already been here at Final Resolution. And up next, the World Heavyweight Championship is on the line. Abyss defends against Christian Cage and you, Sting. And after what we saw this last Thursday on Impact, Abyss's loyalties still seem up in the air. My patience are running really thin with Abyss. But I'm not ready to give up yet because it's hard when the devil himself is pulling your strings like he's pulling Abyss's strings. But tonight, that all ends because the puppeteer will be separated from the puppet in a very violent way. And Chris will be a new man. Oh, well, well, speak of the devil and he appears. You looking for us? What's on your mind? You know what? In fact, don't even tell me because I want to tell you what's on my mind, Sting. 
You make me sick with your little holier-than-thou routine. Let's see if I've got this straight. Every time Abyss acts like the dumb animal he is, it's because I'm pulling his strings, right? It serves some evil purpose. Then, when you act like the animal you are, and make no mistake, you're no different than him or me, it's because you've got some divine purpose, right? Well, let me ask you something. You read your Bible, right? You're familiar with the passages about end times, right? Aren't you? Well, the end times are coming tonight because your little crusade for the salvation of Abyss comes to a crashing end tonight. You understand? Back off! Back off! You know what? If it's revelation you're talking about, I got a revelation for you. Tonight you're going to be dancing with the devil in hell because there's not enough room for you up here anymore. You get it, you piece of garbage? You better end it tonight. In the past, this belt has represented lust and greed, lying, cheating, stealing. Once you have eaten that fruit, Sting! You can't put it back on the tree! But now, this belt is going to represent honor and truth. You let Jim Mitchell lead you around like a little puppy dog. What I want to know is why. You know this man right here, don't you, Abyss? Because he sure as hell knows you. Why don't you and Tomko get reacquainted? You know, Christian and Tomko, their little secret they keep talking about, you really know they know one sentence in a big story. Uh, you remember this place, Abyss? Kind of reminds you of home, doesn't it? No, I'm just here to gather some facts before I let the world know exactly what it is that you've done. Something so wrong. Are uh, you trying to hide this little uh, secret for 15 years? Actually, I believe the word is un. Does anybody else know the truth besides me? Oh, Mitchell's so proud of the mind control that he has over his monster, the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. You gotta stop worrying about your past because you can't change the past. The past is never gonna let you forget. The good news is, Abyss, you can change. We can change your future. Oh, Abyss just looks so confused right here. He looks like he just doesn't understand. Whose side are you on? Mine or stay. Mitchell does nothing for Abyss except hold that championship belt. He may be losing control of Abyss to none other than stay. You proved to me that you're on my side because I know where all the bodies are buried. Yes. Mitchell trying to maintain the control that he has. Stay trying to wrest that control away from Mitchell. You can determine your destiny right now, Abyss. All you gotta do is shake my hand. He knows he's lost the monster, and you see Stay. And you see Abyss and they're raising arms together! Uh, you have with Sting is going to be broken uh, once and for all! I spill the beans. Mitchell all of a sudden thinks he's got control again! It's time, Abyss, for you to come home. Right Stop on, Sting! On Sting. The Abyss wants to come home! The Monster Abyss defends the NWA World Heavyweight Championship against the icon Sting and Christian Cage in a three-way elimination match. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to find out who will face Kurt Angle next month. And against all odds, yes, the NWA World Heavyweight Championship belt. It's on the line tonight at final resolution. This three-way elimination main event, and there you see it. NWA World Heavyweight title at stake. And let's look at the tail of the tape. You take a quick look at the numbers. It just emphasizes the sizable experience edge for Sting, but it also drives home that height and weight advantage for Abyss. Both Sting and Mitchell vying to control the monster, but doing it in two totally different ways. Tomko brought to TNA to ensure Christian wins the title, but he's been barred from ringside tonight. TNA management Jim Cornette wanted to give both Sting and Christian singles titles matches. He couldn't separate the top contenders, and he came up with an elimination match to satisfy both challengers. As we see right here, Christian Cage. You know, we've been watching this battle between Sting and the Monster Abyss, and you wonder if Christian Cage feels he's got an advantage because maybe they're overlooking him. But one thing we talked about, he won't have he won't have 
Tom went inside and Jim Conan barred him from being at ringside. And we've got a cage set up right here by our announcer table mic, and I'm wondering what that's going to be used for. And I'm assuming it's got something to do with that man right there. Did you see the evil eye that Tom Cole gave that cage yes. as well as us here at the broadcast table as he came down? And I wonder if a light bulb just went on above the head of Tomko as we see challenger number one Christian Cage enter this excited ring for combat as part of this three-way elimination matchup for the NWA World Heavyweight title wait a minute here's Jim Cornette from TNA management he's the man who laid down the law and barred Tomko from ringside and Cornette I just heard it he said you're gonna be right there he's not gonna bar him he's gonna make him watch through the steel cage and make it that much harder and you can see Christian knows that if he wants any chance at this championship, he's going to have to abide by this. He had to do it himself once. Challenger number one, Christian Cage, already in the impact zone. Ladies and gentlemen, the appearance of challenger number two, the wrestling icon himself, and what a reaction at final resolution for Sting. You know, we talked about how both Mitchell and Sting fighting for control of Abyss, going about it in those two totally different ways. You think about it, Mitchell controls Abyss on like you treat a wild animal. He controls him by force, by threats. Sting, on the other hand, he's been trying to get inside the mind of Abyss. He reasons with him. He calls him Chris, which we believe is Abyss's real name. He's trying to set him free in his mind from the control of James Mitchell. Feel this electricity every time he comes out. And here comes the defending champion, the NWA world title holder, the Monster Abyss, 6'8", 350 pounds, and holding the belt high above his head. The championship is at stake. James Mitchell comes out. I've got to tell you, I've seen some strange and unusual things in all my years in wrestling. When it comes to disturbing video, I'm going to oh. put that footage with James Mitchell and Abyss at the prison from two weeks ago on Impact. I'm going to put that up against anything that I've seen. Well, the control that James Mitchell has on Abyss, too, is shaky at best. I know he seems to have it now, but you can see that Sting has been kicking at that armor. And you gotta wonder, he still believes he can get through. He believes there's a human being behind that mask. Abyss has been keeping a secret for years. That man, Christian Cage, claims that Tomko knows the secret that they crossed paths in the past. James Mitchell, he insists that those two, Tomko and Christian, they know a few tidbits. They know one page out of a book, in the words of James Mitchell, when it comes to the secret that the monster Abyss is hiding. Elimination rules here. And really, They've already started it off. Yeah, opening bell. And if you think about it, both of the challengers, Sting and Christian Cage, they both wanted singles matches for the NWA World Heavyweight title. Cornette couldn't separate them. So Cornette says we're going to do the next best thing. We're going to go under elimination rules. And Don, that is the key to this matchup. If you're pinned, if you submit, you're out, you're gone, but the match will continue. It's one of those where you better be keeping eyes in the back of your head. We say it so much, but it's one of those situations where you better make sure you know where everybody is at all times because if somebody catches you from behind as a quick roll up, you're gone. It's going to be a lot of strategy involved, and I don't think you're going to see anybody working with anybody in this. There's too much at stake here, Mike. Oh, in the corner, look at Sting now unload as he turns it around on Christian Cage. Yes, it's the two challengers battling. The corner mount, right hand after right hand to the top of the head, and Sting just laying him in there with so much impact. Man, Sting's fired up, and you can tell it. You can feel the emotion, and he knows that he's close to winning that championship back. A belt that he got it down for glory, and it didn't even have it. Barely a month, and it was gone. And you can see that the crowd behind him, what the, I'll tell you something, there's a strategy here that we don't talk about, and that strategy is kind of staying out of the way. If you can kind of avoid it a little bit, your chance of oh. survival, and wow, that's got to hurt. Take his head off. Take his head off is what Mitchell said, and you know, Don, totally different your strategy in this kind of a matchup.
from the three-way that we saw earlier. Oh, oh, where it was first pin or submission. It's like you just mentioned, as we see Sting sent face first right into that cage. Christian, look at that, from the top, and he's caught in midair. Look at the strength of this monster. Oh, he just throws him right on top of the ramp. It's what we expect. We talked about it in the tail of the tape. You see someone 6'8", 350, you know he's going to take advantage of that big height, that big weight advantage that he has, but oh, quickness right there. Christian moves out of the way, and Abisco shoulder first right into the post. Christian's going to have to be smarter than, uh, than these guys right now. He's going to have to use his, his cunning that he has, and he did right there with Abyss. And you can see he's turning around, and now he goes right after Sting. Oh, that was a big oh. move. The Bulldog oh. on the ramp for the champ. Attention turned to Sting, sends him into the cage. Oh, oh right man. on the concrete. Scooped and slammed him right on the concrete in front of us. The unprotected concrete, no pads out there. Sting crashes down. You heard the thud. And now, here comes Christian Cage to roll the champ back into the ring. Oh, you can see the kick right there to the head. It's Christian Cage, another shot to the gut. Just showing us the side of him as he's just battling it out, but he, he realizes it's a chance to try to eliminate a best if he can. As Sting is writhing right here in front of us from that concrete shot that he took. Brutal. And it was amazing how Christian used that cage to his advantage. He knew that Tomko was in there, but he just flunked Sting right into it also. A miss sandwiches Cage wow, in the corner. Hot. Elevates him high into the air as he crashes down to the canvas and Abyss can just feel it at this point. It's that strength. It took him up to his shoulders. I'd anticipate the shock treatment move out of that, but hadn't weakened Christian Cage sufficiently. He's got it here and he hits the shock treatment. Wow. It goes to the pin. One, here it is. Two. two. Oh, wow. man. Christian Cage. Oh, that was close. That was close. He was almost eliminated right there, Mike. How many people have we seen kick out from that shock treatment as Mitchell jumps up on the apron and just hits the doom today? The way he realizes he just wants to tear through these guys one right after another. Swing and a miss with the clothesline. Oh, Christian shot. answers with a perfect move right there. Drop kick directed to the knee of the 6'8 champion. Christian going to head to the top. Well, you got to cut the big tree down, and that's how you do it. Oh, oh he went for the frog splash. But look at the monster of this as he gets him. And then picks him up and slams him down. Choke slam. Choke slam. Pin, two, no. Oh. Wow. Man, Boy, he is just throwing the book here at Christian Cage. Shock treatment, choke slam, two moves that normally gain him victories, but Christian's still alive, and he just drops Sting to the Monster Abyss with a right hand. Whoa. Sting had to, had to actually use the cage to get his balance. Look at Tomko out oh, here. No. Tomko is choking the life out of Sting. He reached his hands through the cage after that shot by Abyss. Black hole slamming the ring. Oh, this is going to be it for Cole. Oh, no, 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 referee Rudy Childs is out here trying to top Tomko. Well, trying to keep him away from Sting. Boy, is this going to Christian's advantage because he was done. He was done, and now Tomko using his foot to get pressure. Everything that he can do, and now you can see the monster Abyss saying, forget about that. I had him pinned. And there's nothing else referee Rudy Charles can do but get back in that ring. Abyss tosses the ref back in and obviously thinks that he's going to take advantage of this situation where he's weakened Christian Cage. Wow, look wow. at him just flip him over like a rag doll. He right hit him with a punch right in the chest, and that's what brought him into the ring. Going to goozle him and choke slam him again. Sting able to get, get by. Yeah, he got out of the clutches of Tomko is what he did. Nice kick right there, Mike. Wait a minute, look at this. Sting feeds the monster abyss right in and then hits it with Scorpion death drop. Pin two. two. He got it. Got it. Abyss is done. Abyss is eliminated. What just happened? He's eliminated from the match. Abyss is eliminated. What just happened? Abyss out, and it's going to boil down to Stinger Christian Cage. We're going to have a new NWA World Heavyweight Champion tonight. Oh, James Mitchell's going absolutely bananas. Just screaming, but look at that. And now Sting holds out his hand. Trying to help him up. But the monster of oh all he knows is he no longer has that belt. Do it, do it, Abyss. Do it. You can hear him. He says, do it, Abyss. Referee Charles going to try and step in here. I don't know if he's going to be able to physically stop him or not. He's choking the life out of Sting. And he just kind of throws him down. I thought he would try to inflict more damage. Just that mentality, knowing that you're no longer the champion. James Mitchell wanted to inflict as much pain as he could. Uh, you just never can understand the dynamic here with Sting and Mitchell.
Mitchell on the outside and Abyss in the middle. And like I said, he's been he's, he's been shaking at that armor, and now Christian Cage able to come right in. You got to wonder what Sting's got left after Tomko choking him through the cage. Nice Christian missile kick. drop kick off the top. Here's the pin. Here's two. two. Oh. No, man, I don't know. He just reached in, and now you can see Christian realizes that the the man with the size advantage is gone. Oh, Christian can feel it here. Blatant chokehold after the series of right hands, right in front of the official, and yes, Rudy Charles makes him stop. Tom Cole, like a caged animal, here beside the broadcast table. He's both cheering on Christian Cage, as well as looks like he wants to just bust right out of that cage. Christian Cage right now has got to have just a, a whole different mindset because knowing that six foot eight, 350 pounds is not in that ring has got to absolutely make you feel like you can accomplish anything and he knows how bad things hurt. See, look at this. He's trying every dirty trick that he can. The beat down, the wear down continues by Christian Cage. The winner of this contest right here between Sting and Christian Cage to become the NWA World Heavyweight Champion and to face Kurt Angle next month. Look at Sting come off the ropes. Oh man, what an elbow that was. He used a couple elbows himself to try to, to get some momentum. He hit them ropes and then Christian Cage just waiting for him and now Look how he confident. feels it. Look at that. Making the motion. First the flex and then you're right motioning that yes, the NWA World Heavyweight title belt is coming to Christian Cage. Thing. I, I think he's been so wrapped up into what's been going on with the monster abyss that I think he felt that it was going to come down to him and abyss in this matchup. And now I think he's, his game plan has changed, but he's got know. so much experience. Look at Sting stalking Christian out of the corner. Just taking that shot. He's he says, Give me he's, another he's one. telling him, hit me with your best shot. Look That's at what this. Christian's doing. And Sting fights through. Man, look at that. I mean, whoa, what a psychological advantage is everything Christian gave him just bounced off of him. Oh, he's on emotion now. Great elevation. Back body drop by Sting on Christian Cage. Gonna follow up the advantage. Gonna shoot him off into the ropes. Oh, he telegraphed the back body drop. It may cost him. Christian caught him with the boot. Sting quickly turns it around. Gonna take him high overhead. Look at the strength right there as he's just holding him up in the air and just throws him down on his back. Gorilla press slam by Sting. NWA World's Heavyweight title hangs in the balance. Stinger splash in the corner. Gonna go back to the well one more time. Here he comes. Another Stinger splash. Oh, he took too much time. Christian Cage able to sense it coming. Get out of the way. You mentioned it, he went to the well and he went one time too many. Sting momentarily plays to the crowd and hit Costin. Can he regain control? From the top, superplex attempt on the way. Christian gonna try and stop it, gonna try and block it, but Sting just overpowered him. What a superplex! And he just levels Christian right there. This is his chance. All he's gotta do is go for the pin and he'll be the world champion. Can he get up and cover him in time? Oh, Mitchell, who took the Monster Abyss back to the locker room area, has come back down the ramp to survey the situation. And Sting's attention, his focus, is taken away from Christian Cage as he turns his back, and that's never a good thing to do. Well, with James Mitchell, you've got to always be looking out, man, but it's great. He's got right If he turns here. him over, if it's he can apply the pressure, there it is. He's going to tap out. See that? Oh man, James Mitchell hit the guy that was holding the key. The key and he's opening it up. He hit him over the head of the cane. He knocked him out. He's got the key away from the key holder. And Mitchell is gonna he's gonna open up the cage to allow Tomko out. Oh man, Tomko is loose from the cage, and look at this! Now Mitchell's gonna get his attention because no. he knows he can't see Tomko behind him. No, no! Tom Tomko takes Sting out of the scorpion and drops him down! This is what Christian needed right there. The guy that prop solves his problem. A weary Christian grips the arm. Two. Oh, he's able to get the shoulder up just to die. Wow. Tomko in again. Christian takes the referee out so that Rudy Charles doesn't see this. The referee's distracted right now, and you can see he's fighting him over, and he doesn't get him over the top of the rope. Now, here comes Abyss down to ringside. And look at that, Abyss goes after top What the He's heck? helping him out. Look out, oh, man, right here table. on the table. Abyss has gone mad, and Abyss, Abyss throws Tomko in the cage and slams
the cage door shut. Unreal how a this came to the end of Sting. But no, he does. Oh, wait a minute. Missed with, with, with the bell. Sting's gonna go. Can you believe it? He hit the prettier. He, he hit Christy Cage's own boots. And here, here we go. One, two, two. stun. No way. No way. How close can you get? How close can you get? Sting of all things hits the unprettier. He, he was gonna try and beat Christian Cage with his own move. Oh God, clothesline, trippery down. Sting avoided the contact, but Rudy Charles got leveled. You can see he's got him goozled right there by the neck. And now you can see Christian fighting with everything he's got. Oh no! Mitchell. Out of nowhere, Mitchell comes in. Oh yeah, Mitchell in with that cane from behind. That was just a wake-up call for Sting, who gets right in his face. And Mitchell the, collides with and, Abyss, who's got that chain. And you can see he doesn't know what to do because he doesn't know what side Abyss is on. And it's obvious Abyss. And look at this, and Sting's got him in this. Yeah, score being Abyss applied to Mitchell. Abyss. Oh wait a minute, remember they said they were going to work together. Abyss just slammed Sting with the chain. Remember that conversation that Christian, I, I don't believe that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Abyss caught me unaware, that's for sure. That one came out of nowhere. Again, Sting got distracted. He put the scorpion on Mitchell, and the monster caught him with the chain, and then the frog splash off the top to the back. Going to try and revive the referee and make him count. Look at him roll. Pin two. two. Christian Cage is the new champ. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner is new. He's done it, Christian Cage, despite the fact that his man, his insurance policy, Taco, did you see Mitchell laughing? I think you're right. I think I get it. You think he'd be upset at a miss losing the title? He's just reveling in the fact that Sting didn't win it. He had his faces covered. He had his faces covered. And you saw that where a miss took that chain when you thought it was going to end it. We'll see you next month. And against all odds, Christian defends against Kurt Angle.